Hey, everybody, we have Scientist Mel with us today on the Science of Internet Trolling. The um, reason we're doing this is because uh, Mel had a video on this just recently, and I thought it was actually really, really, really good. The video is in the video description, so please go check it out. Sub to her if you haven't. Um, she should have by now about 10,000 subs. She doesn't. I don't know why. We have to fix that. But the video she's, she did a, a talk about was on toxic trolling. And I wanna make it very clear that the type of trolling we're talking about are people that are actively going out of their way to uh, to troll. Uh, we have a list of, of types of, of trolls and we're gonna kind of go through them a little bit, but it's not the the innocuous type trolling. We all do a little trolling on the internet, let's be realistic. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, poison's bad for you, but even, even small quantities, a little bit of poison can actually uh, do beneficial things. So there's a reasons why we all troll a little bit. It's not that type of innocuous trolling. Like I go over on the flat earthers on the Roman Cope nights and mess with them. Um, but I mean, I'm not doing anything harmful. I'm not misrepresenting my position. I'm not trying to to uh, hurt them or psychologically damage them. So I want to get that distinction made. When I say like I'm trolling flat earthers, it's not the type of trolling that we're going to be discussing today because the type of type of trolling we're talking about today is completely toxic trolling. Um, I am getting a 500 internal server error on my chat. Now, three people yesterday had mentioned they have the same problem. Uh, that is that is server side. That's not client side. So I have no idea what's going on with that. I tried different browsers. I did everything normal, humanly possible to try to fix a, an error kind of thing. Uh, I don't think it has to do with my system. However, if you're getting that message me as well, I can't tell because I can't read the chat. So uh, I, I can't um, do anything about that if, if people are getting the 500 internal server error. Can you see it now I, on your end? Um, I've pulled up the actual link on YouTube. So I'm trying to see if I can find any of the chat there while it's... Um, uh, I would I would tell people in the chat if you can't read this say something to me uh, you know mention it but I don't think that'd be a good idea it wouldn't work very well so hmm. like I like this morning I, I asked somebody can you give me a quick bio about yourself and I thought about it what other types of bio are there you know, okay so I'm able to pull up the chat on the actual YouTube link so um, so I'm I, I'm able to see what people are saying I've really? paused the video so it doesn't eat into the bandwidth so. All right. Well, Irv, I got Irvine here. Irvine, can you watch the video as well? Maybe you can kind of look at the live chat. People got questions or something like that. Because I um, yeah, I could probably do that. All right. Awesome. So we also have two other people joining us. Maybe I give them a link. But we're going to start off. So, um, a scientist Mel, go ahead and tell people about yourself. They haven't known you by now. <laughs> how to find your channel? What you do and why you made this video? In that order. Okay. So, okay. So essentially, I okay. My I'm have scientist Mel. That's my website, my Facebook, my Twitter, also my YouTube. I'm the same on Periscope. And so essentially what I do is I, I, I feel, and, and I'm not a teacher anymore. I used to be a teacher. I have a master's of arts in teaching. I can teach legally three subjects. Um, I have a master's of science. I have a bachelor's of science in biology and one in biochemistry. And I'm currently in industry, in industry science right now. But I feel, you know, it's, it's like a side project is to try to boost scientific literacy through making accessible content for people to be able to kind of engage. And my viewers always pick my topics. Um, I have been going back in the trolls talk that I did most recently. That's an older episode that I revamped in my newer format. And so I, I kind of engaged with um, my viewers in regards to the types of internet trolls, the studies associated with those people who are toxic trolls, uh, what kind of personality types they are, why they would troll and how to kind of deal with them. Um, and it does kind of spill over into a potentially dangerous realm, especially if you're dealing with trolls that dox you um, and trolls that stalk you trolls that spill over into your personal life and your work life. That's kind of happened to me a little bit, but it wasn't necessarily a troll. It was just a really awful person. So um, this sort of thing can happen. And um, and so I, I kind of what I do with my account is to try to boost scientific literacy. And I allow people a space to where they can, you know, kind of learn something new. I talk I've talked about CRISPR. I've talked about Gosh, I've talked about genetics. I've talked about dark matter. I, it's just roller coasters. Somebody want to learn oh, about roller coasters? <laughs> so, 
just about everything. So whatever people want to learn about, I put a poll up on Twitter, they vote, and that's what I talk about. I am going to talk this Sunday about the science of gun violence. Um, that's something that's kind of come up in talks again, and me being a former teacher, um, that's that's kind of one of those things that's that's, you know, really, really hard for me to kind of see again and again and again happening as I see colleagues that are falling, you know, <laughs> over yeah, this. Yeah, definitely in the, in the news. Uh, so, you know, uh, so sometimes, sometimes we have hard discussions. I, I've done a talk about sexual assault and online stalkers and predators, um, how to combat that, what the signs are. So it spills over into a lot of different areas, but it's always backed up with evidence studies in science and what science has to say about these types of behaviors and what to recognize and how to protect yourself. So it's kind of like a very well-rounded thing. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, we always... We always back it up with evidence. We always present our data with graphs and all kinds of interesting animations. And you know, we, we well, let's talk about the science of why people do trolling. Because I have um, I have friends that have uh, had some serious trolling, and we're talking mm -hmm. 4chan level stuff. Um, there's been people on the internet that I have known uh, of that have committed suicide because of trolling. There are people on you know yeah. on the news that we hear all the time. People have committed suicide by troll from trolls. And yes. and what and the worst part of that is. It seems to me that feeds the troll even more. It gives them some kind of weird sense of empowerment that they were able to take somebody's life in many cases. And and some people are, re are, are remorseful, don't be wrong. But I, I do know a situation where there has been a troll that, that caused the death of somebody and there was just no remorse and they're doing it still to other people. Um, so this is a real life thing that does happen to people. It is. Um, and I'm trying to think of this study. I, and I talk about this particular study in my troll video in regards to the types of individuals that do the toxic trolling. Um, there's like some kind of dark triad that um, psychologists call, you know, if, if you have these particular types of dark um, narcissism, narcissist, narcissist, you know, Machiavellianism, um, sadism, as well as um, as as well as psychopathy. I, I think it's so, I think it's the dark quad or something now. Yeah, dark quad. Okay, that's like. <laughs> so, more see, to it. Yeah. You know, see, this is why I have my videos, and this is why science scientists write stuff down that I have to remember it all. It's like Einstein. Somebody I asked Einstein what right? his phone number was, and he goes, "I hold on, let me look it up." They're like you don't know your own phone number because I wrote it down, so I don't have to remember. So this is why I make videos. I make videos. So I can just go back and look at my videos. So we're like. I made a video so I wouldn't have to remember. So, but yes, essentially there was, um, they, I think it was, it was a study done in Canada where they went and they compiled, it was like over a thousand people were involved and they found that individuals who engaged in toxic trolling exhibited all of those particular dark characteristics, sadism, psychopathy, narcissism, Machiavellianism, all of these sorts of things. So, they enjoy, you know, causing harm and pain to other individuals. They crave the attention. Um, I do have some experience with narcissists. They're not very fun at all. Well, <laughs> and the all more attention <laughs> you give them, right. I mean, the more attention you give them, the more they feed off of that. And so, um, and, and they want a reaction from you whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. You are allowing them to live in your head rent free and they enjoy that sadists. They enjoy inflicting pain. Um, and then you have psychopaths that don't really, they don't really feel. And so they're constantly chasing the dragon, trying to get a reaction to where they can try to feel again. Um, so this is kind of what, we see with these these harmful toxic trolls are inflicting pain, trying to get some kind of reaction out of you in order for them to gain that that attention that validates them in some way. So yeah, that's why negative or positive, it doesn't matter to them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as long as you're engaging with them and giving them attention, kind of like the screaming toddler in a grocery store on the floor, you know. 
if you if you stand there and just stare at them you're giving them an audience and they're going to continue to do so or you can just like yeah I, i'm leaving so <laughs> you, you can stay there and doesn't scream. bother if you're not around her right uh, and real quick <laughs> uh, i guess a couple of people are still getting a 500 internal server, server error not everybody <laughs> i don't know how to fix it i don't like i said it those are yeah. internal server errors i something on the google youtube side but it's not it's only like a few people it's not everybody but real quick i want to get uh, the geek room in here real quick frankie just to, to to kind of differentiate again between trolling and harmless type stuff because because obviously the geek room your show is a shit show when it comes to you know why oh, yeah. no, that's what you do but i mean you have no ill intent you have no ill will you don't do it to feel your you know feed just narcissistic thing that you have because you're, you're far from a narcissist but it's it's a content. It's a, it's something where people do satire. People they lampoon. I get that. Um, but you want to quickly tell more about how you do it, Frankie, as opposed to an actual internet troll that would be viciously going out and trying to do this to hurt somebody. Because I know you. You if somebody tells you, please, you know, you know, just lay off me, kind of thing. You you're fine with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You have to, you have to we've, yeah. We've actually got told uh, one time by. Uh, James self standard, he was going to do some kind of roaster mania or something, or some kind of ro uh, roast thing that he wanted us to be into. Some uh, he was trying to mimic it to be kind of like, um, uh, what is it? Uh, the guy who was never born, so he gets to see his life how it was if he was never born. I can't remember this. Uh, it's a wonderful name. life. There you go. And oh, okay. uh, what he wanted us to do oh. was he, wa he wanted us to roast somebody else like he was never born. And the guy, and the guy literally tells me he uh, tells James that he doesn't want us to ro roast him, and I was like, hey, "Why is there is there a problem?" He's like, "Yeah, he just he doesn't want y'all to roast him. He thinks he says we're too mean on James, so he don't want to be he, we, he doesn't want anybody to be mean." I was like, "That's fine. I'm not going to you know pick at anybody that 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 doesn't want to be. If someone comes up to me and says, "Hey, you know, this, if you." Yes, you said this thing, it kind of hurt my feelings. You know, I'll apologize to you. <laughs> you know, as yeah, long as you have fun, anyways. The, the, the yeah. person being roasted is supposed to get a, you know enjoyment out of it. Um, yeah. it's, but I get, I'll tell you, even with roast, they've come a long way since like the Dean Martin roast. Those were funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. If you guys <laughs> want to laugh, go watch some of the old Dean Martin roast. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. They were hilarious. Um, I think they've got a little more vicious nowadays in the modern yeah. era. But yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, if, if people, you know, have an, a mental issue or something like that, and that you think that mocking them or ridiculing them or roasting them is going to do psychological harm, then I think we have a responsibility to yeah. just not do it. I think it's a there, moral. There were some people that we have um, wanted to put on a show, and it, before I put anybody on the show that I want to kind of, you know, have a little fun with the videos, I watch each and every one of their videos. I just scan through their videos as much as I can to make sure that there isn't any kind of like make sure this person's not mentally ill make, make sure they like if they see us they're not going to cause them harm or anything uh there's one lady named holly uh she says she was an mk ultra she was part of mk ultra program uh 50 years after it was closed down or something and people were going after her viciously like people were calling her uh, her calling her phone and stuff like that, and then trolling her, pretending, pretending to be her friend, and just re really bad stuff. And I'm just like, I I'm not going to be a part of this. But I looked further into it, and I, to me, she's more mentally unstable, and I'm not going to go after a person like that. Um, just because I don't know what's going in their head, they could either harm themselves, harm other people. Um, so I'm not going, even though they come up with some funny content that I think would be funny for the show. I'm not going to put them on the show to, uh, for them to, you know, do something to themselves or to other people. Um, you're not willing to exploit them. How about that? <laughs> for views? No. Can you hear me? Yes. I can okay. I was making sure I just cut out. It, <laughs> But there are there, there are a lot of people and that will do that. Um, Von Helton, for example. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's the snipe? Sorry, guys. Uh, my my bad. Um, I was just saying real quick. Uh, you you're you're not doing it for the sake of just getting abused and to harm yeah. other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I think if 
at one point that this person will, would harm them if we went over to videos just to have a little fun, then yeah, I'm not going to do it. It's it, it, someone else's I life is not. I, I couldn't even yeah. imagine that on my conscience. Yeah. You're roboting a little bit. Oh, let me, I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> we'll get this straightened out. Yeah, okay. So playful trolling. Yeah. I equate playful trolling a lot to rolling somebody's house with toilet paper. <laughs> okay. So when I was a teen, we were bored and we didn't, I, I grew up in a really small town. And so I only rolled people's houses of people that were my friends. <laughs> and so I would get this silly shit because it was a true artistic endeavor. I would go and buy really nice toilet paper. I would get plastic forks. I would get silly string. I would I would save Coke cans for like, you know, a couple weeks. It was an artistic. I was quite proud <laughs> of my rolling houses. And so I would take forks and I would make like in their front yard, like a little like a little pitch pitchfork fence kind of, you know, it was like a little white picket fence, but with forks. And then I would take napkins and I would tie knots in like a thousand napkins and throw it in their yard. And then I would take silly string and write messages telling them how much I love them. And then I would like throw like toilet paper all through the trees. And then I would line their driveway with Coke cans. It was a true effort. <laughs> and it was amazing. The, 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 the piece de is when you when you put sugar all over their lawn and then you hold it down with water and there's a, there's a mat of ants in the morning. Oh. I was not that bad. That's pretty vicious. But, That's vicious. I've never, no, I've never done that. I've just, but even my I heard friends, that when I was a kid growing up. So, well, I don't know. Somebody try it out. Let me know if it's true. No, don't do that. You know, <laughs> but it's like my friends knew I did that. They'd be like, oh my God, I want you to roll my house. And I'm well, like, I would totally roll your house because I love you. Well, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like um, you know, World Out of Ink, right? It's kind of like an honor to be parodied by Weird Al, right? I mean, people have yes. Weird Al, people are like, are you crazy? So let me ask you a quick question before we get into the different types of trolls and things of that nature. Um, for example, like this video here, um, we already have seven dislikes. What would you think of the type of personality that would say, hey, what they're talking about, we dislike that. Um, we think trolling is good. I mean, I don't care whether I get like or dislike because the, the thing is it all makes the numbers go high. People don't go back and watch these these types of older videos that much, right? Um, and they don't care. They're gonna have they're gonna have a thousand dislikes and one like. People still watch it. I figure that out, right? I mean, <laughs> even my most disliked videos get a lot of views, so I don't care whether like people like or dislike the video. But I mean, I hope they kind of personally like stuff, of course. But I, why would somebody vote down a video talking about trolling? What does that say about that kind of person? That's like a really really soft soft trolling it's like oh, oh i'm yeah, just gonna pick at you and troll on you i'm doing pre press down vote that's like number one on the scale of trolling sure that's that's you know <laughs> very bland. but i'm just saying <laughs> they just do it i don't know do you think there are some I people mean, that, that is a that type of troll isn't it that you know like they go through and they like hate every i've i've had a i've actually had a troll he was um on on my twitter account constantly pushing anti-vaxxer rhetoric um, and he'd have me read stuff that was propaganda. I'm like, this is not, you know, scientifically based at all. Why are you sending me this? And so we followed each other for a while. Then he went and got on my YouTube account and just started hating everything. And I'm like, do you have no life? I mean, it's like. Well, I, this I hate this. I hate okay. this. Like, this. This usually happens when I have the geek room on. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not even exaggerating. Am I? Am I making this up? No. <laughs> if it's twenty, if you get twenty-five, <laughs> I know exactly who it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't we know this guy. What I do to him? It's just because of us. He, never met him. We got, we got one guy. He likes to troll every once in a while. Um, he'll come down, come and just twenty five dislikes automatically, like in the first minute of the show start. <laughs> and anytime we do it, like, hi Robbie. You know, well we we'll, 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 we'll tell him hi. hi then he, you know he'll he'll come in the chat and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it, use your power for good, Robbie. <laughs> for good, man. What I do feel bad is uh, for uh, James, uh, one one of our buddies. Uh, who has a YouTube down with that YouTube account that we uh, had that interview with? Um, <laughs> he was getting trolled really bad, and he let it affect him. No. And the bad thing is, if you tell them that, like, especially if they downvote, like, oh, you you don't, you know, you downvote my video, why? You know, you, you make it known that you're upset about it. Then they're gonna go and downvote all of them, like, because <laughs> I tried to tell James, like, don't just don't acknowledge them; they'll go away. And he, he 
James, I love I you, but don't it. listen to me. I'm doing it. I whatever, but I, <laughs> yeah. it's just surprising to me. Um, and I draw it down. I was like, that's engagement. That's what you want. So, so many other engagement. things that people could be doing. I, I, whatever, man. Whatever you wish to do, uh, uh you know, harmless <laughs> stuff like that. Whatever. That's a like yeah. you said, that's a one on the on the scale of trolling, right? <laughs> you know? It's yeah. It's a it's a very low form of troll. Um, it's kind of. Like a like a little bit of a of a of a you know gut punch of it. Like yeah. I'm just gonna not like everything you've ever I'm made. Like you know? Everyone's just like, okay. My I'm gonna, wife like, will uh, downvote the video scared. just for the fun of it. So well, I, I was told <laughs> I was told by this, and again, this is you know you know whatever information. It could be true, could be not, but I think it's kind of a good maybe rule of thumb. But somebody had told me in the entertainment business that if eighty percent of people like you and twenty percent hate you, you're in a sweet spot. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> that's that, I, that's the way it's got to be, right? That you're not going to please everybody. You got to do what you think is best and uh, you, you go from there, right? So, oh, goodness. Uh, real yeah, quick, I want to get Irvine in here just before we start talking about more of the science stuff. Irvine, I mean, have you been, if I can ask, have you been a victim of trolling? Um, on social media, on in person, yes, I have been. So, you, you've been up and close and personal with this kind of toxicity? Yes. Um, especially a lot because the town I was living in before, um, I was in the paper a lot. I was on the news. I was being interviewed. And you wouldn't believe all the hate speeches that I was hearing and getting. Um, some of them were just... Um, <laughs> well, damn, I didn't know we had a minor celebrity on our hands. Okay. <laughs> um, we need to go I through mean, your agent next time when we invite you in. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we, what can I ask? What was the um like? What were you being uh, interviewed for? If I can ask, I mean, did you have like some kind of breakthrough in science or come up uh, with? No, of... it was a lot to do with the transgender community, oh, okay, okay. LGBT community, and stuff like that. So more uh, mm -hmm. opinion pieces, insight kind of stuff. Pretty much, yeah. Gotcha. And real quick, uh, uh, we also uh, this uh, had um. Uh, Michael come in. Michael has a little debate group that he started up. Uh, Michael, let me, let me just get yes. Me. Hey, what? Good to see you again, man. So, uh, uh, just to give you an FYI. We're doing uh, the hanging on the trolling stuff. Did you want to add real quick to this? Have you been experiencing anything like this? So yeah, it's I'm starting to experience it a lot more uh, as we're growing, and, and I'm getting a lot more active members that are participating. So it's something I'm pretty new new to dealing with, and I'm I'm looking forward to hearing how you guys. Uh, handle it. I have, you know, a sociopath thread that the trolls seem to really like right now. So, uh, you know, they've been eating that one up. And anytime, you know, I get into politics or anything like that, that seems to be a, a green light for them to kind of not address what you're talking about, but just get really insulting to different members or whoever's saying things. So I'm new to it and I kind of want to hear what you guys experience with it and, and how you deal with it. Yeah, politics and religion and anything like that, it's, it's going to yeah. happen. I mean, you're dealing with people's fundamental beliefs, right? When you're criticizing their belief or belief systems or lack of belief, whatever the hell you want to call it as, um, yeah, people get visceral with it. And I think that a lot of them do cross the line going from just, you know, talking about it or even um, insults to actual uh, actual trolling. Some things actually do damage. Yes. And, and that's the point where you as a community person um, in your community, I would recommend you're done. You're done. If that You know, I... I can't imagine being infected in real life by 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 trolls and and things happen. Things have affected my real life, people in your guys' mm -hmm. cases. But when a troll actively goes after you <clears throat> to the point where they're like, for example, I had somebody do a blog on me, right? I mean, a, a whole blog piece, a big blog hit piece, uh, a, a long time ago. It was completely absurd. The person didn't even know me, right? It, it, everything on there was completely wrong. First of all, they started saying that I'm like the biggest, uh, worst atheist on the internet. I'm like, okay, already you have no idea if you ever watch my shit, right? <laughs> so, so it's just once it gets into your, you know, trying to make it personal, uh, you have to annex that. I think, I think you have to say, you know what, it's it's time to go a different direction. Yeah, and well, go ahead, Michael. Then we get back go to ahead. The sorry, back to the sorry, sorry. In a second. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I just wanted to add real quick. So something I had recently happen was uh, I had an activist for human rights. Uh, do a separate post saying human rights aren't up for debate. And he would only comment on the topics that like, you know, he, he was totally not in agreement with. So he wasn't trying to debate anything. He was just trying to completely disagree and he wasn't backing up anything he was saying. And, 
I just found it to be very counterproductive, <laughs> you know? So, and he went out of his way to post things about me on, on his different pages and stuff. So I found that interesting. All right, let's get back to it. Yeah, yeah. That is, I mean, it is. Uh, I don't know why people do certain things like that. I don't know. I mean, well, you, I mean, you kind of like engage on what you want. But all right, st scientist uh, Mel, let's get back to your uh, your video here. Um, I'm actually kind of looking through it a little bit. I don't know what you want to start on it. Um, I kind of liked the, um, and I don't know, did you come up with these categories? Or no, these categories? I actually referenced the categories. Um, I, I believe I referenced the categories in the actual um, video. I do, and if you're curious, if you're ever curious, I do update my website, scientistmail.com with all my slides associated with my videos. And so if you if you wanna kind of dig further into my sources, they're all available on my website. And if you're an educator, you can use my slides in coordination with my videos, if that helps you. Um, now I found those categories I can't remember the website. See, this is why I make videos. This is why you so make videos. I don't have yeah. to remember all of my sources. I put them in the video at the end and on my website. So. Too much stuff to remember. This is why you need a pocket brain and you need to write it down. Actually, you need a couple of assistants. <laughs> yeah, I, I I need some minions. I really yeah. need some minions because I'm behind. I want to be Mel's minion. Because that sounds pretty I'm cool. I'm so behind. I have three podcasts, if, audio if I episodes. Have, yeah, I, I have to edit. Episode, I, don't be like, a I would That'd do it. You want to be a minion? I want to be a minion. I've got. <laughs> I, I, get, I, I have sycophants. You guys have minions. So <laughs> I, I call dibs. You go, yeah, no. <laughs> you want to be a minion? Yeah, Mel's, Mel's I'll let you. I'll let you pick which. MMA. What's your favorite number? And that's the minion you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am minion not, number not minion? forty-two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, interesting. Are you gonna you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna have like fifteen people all go into your video after this, and they're gonna be like, "I'm minion number five. I'm minion number twelve. Go for it." Yeah. Hey, she needs help. Know, I don't have. I can't. I don't have the the wherewithal to to or the time. I to actually. You I mean, know knows how how busy I've been lately trying to arrange a bunch of stuff. Well, yes, and and also, you know, I actually that's one of my levels on Patreon. You can be a minion on my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> So you get to pay you get to pay her to be her minion. It's it's like a dollar. Deal. I tell you, you have a gold mine right now. You need to you need to promote this. Mel's minions. Yes, I have Mel's science work. officers, Mel's minions, yes, Mel's mad scientists, all of these. It's just like yeah. So but, I mean you're just a minion, you're not a mad scientist, but you're a minion, okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> So we're talking about, okay, so the different categories of trolls, you got your grammar Nazis, you got your flamers, you've got your haters well, let's go through these. I have pulled up. Like, I, pulled up. Uh, okay. I, I, I want to go through them real quick, but I mean, just kind of tell, because I, I figured out most, I think. Um, they seemed, I didn't look any of these up. I figured they were more fun to kind of figure out what, <laughs> what they mean just by the name, right? Um, uh -huh. I love this rabid flamer. <laughs> this is not a homophobic <laughs> reference. Let me tell you. Okay. Rabid flamer. <laughs> what do you guys want to guess what a rabid flamer is? <laughs> Anybody? Okay. Uh, so somebody who's just angry for the sake of being angry. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, let me see uh, if I can pull so up like a website. curmudgeon. Would, uh, uh, would you say like a curmudgeon that just, just comments a bunch of just angry stuff? That would be a rabid flamer. Probably. Yeah, I, I would say just some. Okay. All right. So this is from Smosh, S M O S H dot com. Okay. All right. So I'm pulling it up now. I'll put it in the group chat here so you guys can take a look. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought, and, and there's very, very interesting, colorful pictures. And I'll put that on the YouTube chat as well. So if you guys are watching and commenting, I'll post the link here. Um, so you can I will see. add it to the video description. The 18 types of internet trolls. Because I, I can't put it in the um, I can't put it in the uh, live feed because obviously I'm not getting that right now. Um, so let's let's do this. Let me put it in the video description right now. And if people want to go follow along, all they got to do is yes. refresh. Is that cool? Yes. So there's uh, 18. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. The rabid flamer, according to Smosh.com, is this guy likes to make trouble for his own amusement. If nothing particularly nasty is going on, he'll whip out his flamethrower and burn everyone in his path, especially denizens of parenting or pets chat rooms. <laughs> oh, chat room. Chat room and Facebook. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yes, that would be I, the I, rabid flamer who's just hateful for the sake of being hateful and just for his I, own amusement. Saved. If you want to follow along with this, uh, the link is in the uh, video description. So, but I ask if you go to that link at the same time, take a half a second, click the uh, link to Mel's channel. So you can also go subscribe to her as well um, at the same time. Come on. All right, so I'm looking at this now too. I did not see this before. So I'm glad that you brought this uh, to my attention because I didn't know the details. So this is actually really cool. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the, the next one is the, the priggish, priggish grammar troll. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we all know that I suck at spelling. I mean, even I was talking to Rumpus the other day and, and, and he pointed out again, yes, yeah, you're not the greatest speller. I'm like, I'm the first to admit that, right? Um, people might remember me telling them I had a, a, like a speech impediment for many, many years. And I think that kind of carried over to my inability to spell very well. And I'm fine with that, right? I'll make, I hope I make it up and make math and other things. But most of the time, many times we all have typos, right? And we're typing really fast and we use the wrong your and something or the wrong there, right? And we all do it. Even the biggest grammar Nazi in the, in the world probably has screwed this up before. Or spell Steve's last name wrong. Oh, well, yeah. Don't you dare. <laughs> <spell the last laughs> <name wrong. laughs> that happens frequently. So <laughs> I, I think the grammar Nazi, for some reason, they really want to go out of the way because they don't have an argument to uh, try to find these these grammatical errors rather than have to address the argument and they, they get some kind of weird sense of enjoyment like i'm making a better case i've showed this person up because i i showed them that they're they have a wrong use of grammar or spelling oh yeah okay. i have i have like a flip side <laughs> of that with trolling a very good friend of mine and she's known as at s-t-a-v-v-e-r-s -E on twitter at stavers her name is zoe she's a very good personal friend of mine um, she trolled Richard Dawkins <laughs> like pretty heavily with um, you're a dick instead of Y O U R, a, you know, like properly. She, she spelled it Y O U R, like you're, you're a dick. And that became, <laughs> that became like a massive hashtag to where people were just trolling Richard Dawkins. No, saying, I, I, you're a dick. I, I will admit, I've done, I have done this work. Where somebody has been so visceral and they're like, you're a freaking idiot, <laughs> idiot, idiot. And I and then I respond, it's your. You know, I mean, I, I've done that. <laughs> right? But you spelled it wrong. wrong on purpose yeah. just to make him mad. <laughs> 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 and so he's like, I don't. And he tweets about it. It's This was like, oh, God, I think it this was like three or four years ago. Awesome. And she, she talked about the anniversary of it recently. And she goes, it's been like X amount of years since your yeah. dick was the thing. So he got, she got trolled like, hard and he fell for it. <laughs> And he's like, why is everybody misspelling your in my ass? <laughs> you know, I think he's probably, he's not used to that kind of thing. And so he just doesn't know how to handle it. You know, like I, I love Zoe. I love Zoe, though. That savers That's is funny. great. If you don't follow right. her, she's fantastic. Um, <laughs> next one is the uh, the crybaby. <laughs> uh, I get a lot of these. Oh my God. This is like, I think this is one of my, they're all my favorites, I think. But this one's great. This is the person who's like, ah, like, oh, you're being mean to me. I'm never going to come back. <laughs> and the next day, they're on Facebook again, talking about the same freaking thing. <laughs> but wait, I got to ask, is this is that really a troll, though? I don't know. That's uh, just somebody with, like, that doesn't have a very thick well, skin. They are looking for attention, are they not? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So if we're going to be using that as a, a troll looking for attention, right? So even though it's not so much that they're looking... Um, to hurt somebody or to to feed their ego they, they just want attention right they like just want argument. attention essentially i'm so upset i'm leaving social media forever and you guys are going to miss me please miss me please miss me <laughs> please miss me yeah, you I, know. I, I, you know, I love that people think like 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 everybody's like um you know um what's the word um so important that life doesn't go on without them or the internet doesn't go on without them um I know people that, you know, used to be, you know, around four or five years ago. And then it's like people like, who, who's that now? And I'm in five years ago, it's probably like that with that. Who's Steve? You know, I, I, the only thing I can say for sure, <laughs> five years from now, nobody's going to be saying who's the geek room. It's not going to happen. People are going to be like, hey, what's the number one Internet thing on TV or, uh, <laughs> thing on uh, the Internet? You know, the geek room. Um, but, yeah, it's like it's like they think that if you if you leave the conversation um, in the middle of it, that saying that you're never going to be back and then uh <clears throat> it's somehow that you you won that for some reason i don't know i i don't get it all right so the next one never give up never surrender troll 
Oh God. Those are the narcissists. I'm going to tell you right now. The never give up, never surrender are the people who do not take responsibility for themselves and think they're right constantly. I know we all know one or two people like this that <laughs> I have funny. never heard them say they were wrong about a damn thing, kind of thing. And uh, we're not mentioning any names, but it's it's it is right. It is like it's like they could say one plus one is four, mm -hmm. and somebody will point out, no, it's two. No, no, it's four. Let me find you fifty thousand ways to try to to justify it's four. Use I mean weird mathematics or whatever. See, I, I, I'm saying that if I did it this way, it could be four. You know, I'm just using it that way. It's, it's, it, they'll try to rationalize any mistake that they make like that, right? Yeah, I mean, and and they will and they'll go on for days and days yeah. and days and, I uh, you know, and on my science account, I get people that are that like to explain things to me, <laughs> like. Is that, I is don't that, wait, need is that you like, to is that like mansplaining? Is this is in this way? It's troll explaining. I, I I I get that so often. <laughs> it's just I you know I I'm just I, I like today. Um, today I had somebody telling me that I was like deceiving America by saying something about there being 18 shootings, like school shootings. And so I was saying, this is the literal definition of what shooting is like, well, you like a, a deceiving America. I'm like, I'm, I'm actually just telling you the truth right now. Well, yeah, they were um, saying that uh, if, if you, if you fire a weapon in school, but not, nobody gets hurt, it's not a shooting. And that's, that's not a real shooting. That's a but shooting. I, you know, and then I have people, you know, it's that want to, I have people that show up in like on my YouTube comments that want to explain to me how to teach evolution to people. And I'm like, I, I was a teacher who taught evolution in the Bible belt. I was considered a highly successful teacher. Hey, now, let me, let me explain to you how to explain to people evolution. <laughs> I'm just I'm like, I'm telling you about here, you talk. need to do this. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I, I had a whole master's, my whole master's project was linking content mastery to content interest. And I managed to quantify that and show that I defended it. In addition to that, I have a master's in science. I know what I'm talking about. I right, don't now, need now we're feeding into freedom. Mel's narcissism. No, you know, it's like, it's, you there's, know, you know by the way, I want to, look, I want to clarify Mel. There's a difference between narcissism and, um, you know, being <laughs> proud and confident and, and people often get those confused. I mean, people that are accomplished like yourself have every reason to have a confidence level and be proud of their accomplishments. That is not the same as narcissism. If they think that well, is no, it's narcissism. not. And I, I'm willing to admit, I don't know that much about astrophysics. And so, I, or, in, or a particular like geolocation. So if somebody asks me a question on my science account, I want to know about this. I'm like, dude, I do too. I don't know the answer. But I know somebody who does, and I go find that narcissism would be like, I know everything, you know. And so you know, it's just, I I'm willing to concede I don't know everything, and but I will find the resources and reputable individuals who can explain things or at least give me the information to where I can relay it in a manner that's accessible to everyone. But that's kind of like what I do. Um, but I don't profess to know everything. I know biochemistry. I know human biology. I know proteins. I know DNA recombination. I mean, that's like my job. So <laughs> if it's my job and I've, I, you know, and I had an entire master's project just on, you know, teaching science, I think I know what I'm talking about because a bunch of old people gave me a degree and said, she knows what she's talking about. And <laughs> so it's like, I think give Frankie's me a break. Anyway. Frankie, did you want to? <laughs> It looks like you want you're, you're like dying to jump in here or something. Uh, which one are we on? Oh, uh, we're we just <laughs> finishing up the uh, never give up, never surrender troll. Oh fuck! I had so I had to deal with so many of these kind of people. Um, especially back when we first started. Uh, every time we made a video rebuttaling this one guy's like, nope, nope, nope. Then he he would never. <laughs> like listen to our points he just start going no 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 you know my way is right you know stuff like that so these, these people you can't argue with and you shouldn't um after maybe about the fourth time of trying to argue maybe trying to get the way uh drop it yeah and there's look, there's, going, <laughs> happen, there's a complete difference between have a different opinion like if i have a different opinion than you that's you know people can hold their guns on that but if you're telling me that the earth is flat and i'm telling you that the earth is round um <laughs> Yeah, you know, you you're, you're you think you're always gonna be right in that, uh, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, there's I, no so, use. <laughs> but go ahead. 
Uh, I was just saying, it, it's just no use. It's just no use when you're dealing with it. Like, yeah. yeah, I see. That's well. That's one of the reasons why I don't like engaging pose, right? I like to have an engagement and I like to talk about it. And if somebody can change their position, great. If they can change mine, that's awesome as well. Um, but a Poe, you can't because a Poe doesn't really give you their true position. Why have a discussion on it, right? Yeah. You know? and, so. and it's it's just, it, and that's why I really don't engage heavily with trolls, um, especially on social media. Um, I, I do have a little placard that I throw up after a while. Once they become rude, the arguments are circular. I, I'm like, dude, I'm not here for you. <laughs> I'm here, here to, for us. <laughs> I'm here <laughs> to give you access to information. If you want to learn, I'll, and, and if I don't know the answers, I'll find somebody who does, you know, and, and give you reputable resources. Um, I, I, I'm not here to be belittled. I'm not here to be insulted. I'm not here to make you feel like you have to one up somebody who's been to university longer than you have. I'm not, exactly. I'm not here for that. But we're, I'm not, but Mel, we're all, we're all in the same boat there, right? None of us are here yes. for anybody else, but for reasons of our, of our own beings, right? We do this for ourselves and for, other people and most of us we want it to educate people help people talk to people have conversations uh mm -hmm. so yeah everybody has their own reasons for doing stuff and if you're not you're, on, you're not under any obligation to communicate with anybody you're not under no. any obligation to find yourself you're not under any obligation to, to people are act, i've seen them troll you i know what you're talking about <laughs> and i love and the little page funny. and i've actually written my one myself i'm working on for that very thing but you, she has a page where if a troll gets to the point where it's just the communication has gotten so bad that they, she can tell it's just not worth having a discussion with. She's like, here's a link for you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You know, I, I did say this one girl, like you shouldn't like, um, like engage with them, like drop it. But at this moment, I'm actually arguing with wild bill for America. <laughs> so I don't take my own advice. Uh, wild right. bill for America. What is wild bill for America? Uh, I don't want to get into individual people, but uh, you can, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm curious. What's this? I, I'm not familiar with Wild Bill for America. Is he like you know? He's a, a really crazy Republican Christian guy. Um, he made some video called Athe. Uh, what was it? Atheist. Um, atheist school shootings basically the school sh shootings are happening because there's atheists in there and i was like this is probably about the lowest this load that yeah well the, people use tragedy for promotion of their own agenda right oh these yeah. shootings are because you know <laughs> god is unhappy with an atheist movement right? okay i'm sorry the shootings happen because they had doritos for ladies okay that's what this is <laughs> yeah they made then, doritos for ladies and I that's just what covered this universe one. responding is that why we have like hurricanes and tornadoes yep. too Yes, yes. Uh, it, makes sense. it makes sense. I think we could draw a corollary there. We, we, I think we really need to do a yeah. study on that. Can we get some funding to do a study on Lady Doritos and uh, tornadoes? That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of these get throughs. Let's keep going here. Um, the retroactive stalker. They're weird. Yeah. Ooh. This one, this one's creepy. They dig through all of your stuff. Because I actually, I've seen people do this where they'll find videos from like three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, and all of a sudden they'll make something on this. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, we've already seen this. This is nothing new. Um, but they're, they're, these are kind of people that go through every post you've made on Facebook and things of that nature. And look what they said five years ago. Well, let me tell you people, people's opinions do change, right? Something that they said five years ago and something they say now may differ. There's nothing wrong with that as long as they're able to justify and explain it. Yes, I thought that back then. I've changed my position. So what? Steve, you can't change. That's not allowed. Yeah, I know. I mean, growth, <laughs> right? growth is, is discouraged uh, um, around the internet. So. so yeah, that's a weird one, Mel. Do you want to talk about that one for a second? <clears throat> okay, so... All right, so I don't find like the the stalker thing weird when it comes to YouTube videos because they can go through and be like, oh wow, here's because I've done videos. Some of my most popular videos have been like cannabis, you know, yes. <laughs> and all kinds of random stuff. So people go through and like, oh, she did a video on cannabis. Let me find it. Let me find it. That's not weird. It's when they get on their on, on your Twitter and they like look. <laughs> a long time ago and they're trying to find something so they've 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 spent a substantial amount of time picking through all of your tweets trying to find something where they think they can kind of throw in your face about something that you might have been wrong about 
Yeah, it's a lot of effort they put into something that seems so ridiculous. Like I said, I mean, people do change things. And plus, you know. That is we, creepy. That is we, creepy we, we, in itself because they've spent a lot of time trying stalking. to read through and find. <laughs> it is stalking. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And it's not normal. <laughs> um, so. But if, here's the thing. We all put a lot of information out there, right? And, and especially not just like the videos like this, but God, do we write a lot of stuff on Facebook and write a lot of stuff on Twitter and write a lot of stuff on g plus and, and all these other social medias and written things um unfortunately a lot of times things get changed contextually right there's a lot of implications in it that you don't actually get when you're writing stuff um so when people go back and they try to look at all these old posts and stuff like that yeah it's very easy for a troll to try to take things completely out of context or twist it to their own agenda and like i said yes it seems like a trivial waste of time to me and i've known people oh, yeah. that have done this to other people uh, to the point of, of going back to finding things when they actually did have different positions, completely, I mean, really different positions. And they've done a 180 on it. And so now when that person says, no, no, I don't believe that anymore. They're like, oh, look, this person believed this five years ago. What, so what? People change their <laughs> position. I, I don't see it. Why, why is it a problem with that? Because I don't see a problem here. Yeah, I mean, and this thing, people are allowed to completely change their position, especially when you get new evidence to exactly. kind of shift your perspective. That's kind of what science is, and that's what people should do. Um, and so I think those particular trolls, they expect you to kind of stick to your guns on a position that you may have been wrong about. Is that projection? And because maybe they have that, uh, that to never give up, never surrender trope mentality. And so they think that, oh, wait, because they never give up. Or they never change positions that they're projecting it off on somebody else. Well, that's that's possibly the case. Um, and also, if a troll is trying to discredit you and saying scientist Mel said this this one time, what I like to do often is when I get a troll like that on my scientist account on on Twitter, I'll quote them. I'll be like, yes, you're absolutely right. I said this this one time, but here's this information that, you know, I accept is what the current information is. And I shifted my perspective. Then you kind of disarm them in that. And then you and you open it up saying, hey, I'm a human. I'm allowed to change my perspective with new evidence. And that kind of gives you a bit more credibility. So that's kind of how I handle um, disarming trolls like that. If, if they find something that I was wrong about in the past, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I was wrong about that. Here's this new evidence. That oh, so you can't be otherwise. trusted ever again. You were wrong. How dare yeah. you? How dare you? <laughs> Let me give you yeah. a, a quick tweet yeah. on something that happened <laughs> yesterday. Uh, we interviewed Arn, Arn Ra for our podcast. And it, was, it was splendid. It was fabulous. We had a great time. Enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Um, and a little quick teaser on it is that um, he was making the point that, for example, like we all know that creationists and, and really hardcore evangelists, they're, they're just straight up liars, many of them, right? We, I'm convinced that, that many of them are 100% know they're full of crap. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, when people point out that they're, they've lied or they've made a mistake or they've done anything, nobody cares anymore because it's so ubiquitous among them. But somebody like Aaron, who's a scientific educator, if he makes one mistake that he has changed his position <laughs> on, which he has done before, uh, he, whoa, he can't trust Aaron anymore. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Or look, uh, Aaron lied about this because he said this and now he says this. And it's like, wow, that is so messed up, right? But that's what they try to do. They do. They try to discredit you as a science communicator and educator. But here's the thing. When I was a teacher, the textbook I was teaching, and I used to teach biology, and I taught biology one and two for a while. Um, the textbook that I taught out of at that time was seven years old. And so the age of the earth was quite different <laughs> with new information. Um, we also had other findings that kind of threw out what used to be in this textbook. And so I would teach my students the correct information. And then I'd say, but on the state mandated test that you have to take, it's going to have this wrong information on it. So you'll have to answer the question this way. Um, so the, the whole thing about science communication is it's going to change. Your information is going to change. We used to think that junk DNA was just junk, but apparently it has a function because we have new information. And being able to accept the fact that like, well, this is how we used to think things are, but this is how it is now because we have technology, we have all of this substantial information, there's been research that's done with this. To me, that um, 
the ability to be able to say, I accept this new evidence. This is what we have now. This is what the current um, hypotheses are. This is what the current, you know, information we have that debunks previous thought. To me, that's profound. And, and that shows a level of um, ability that a lot of general of the general population don't have. And so to me, that kind of boosts a bit of respect. So if somebody's like, well, you were wrong about this. And I was like, well, yeah, because that's what we thought at the time. But here's all this new information. I, I, so I, otherwise, I, how exciting, you know, I, I took it for a, they call it junk DNA only because not that they said it didn't have any function is that they may have not known what the function was. But by the way, we have a mm -hmm. we're having a part two on that whole DNA as code. I know you and I disagree on that. And I know this is your area of expertise, but who the hell am I? But I, I will get another side like uh, Dr. Mays doesn't think DNA is a code, right? And I talk about the actual molecule, right? The biopolymer, biopolymer, not not the code on chart, not the RNA synthesis, but we're talking actual molecule. And maybe we'll have another part two on that because that's a fun discussion, right? And I could be wrong. If somebody wants to demonstrate to me that DNA itself, the molecule is a code, I'm willing to listen to that. I will change my position on that. Not a big deal. I mean, um, it codes for proteins. I, I don't know how you can get around that. Well, we're going to set you up with uh, Dr. Mays, who's a geneticist, PhD in genetics, and he argues the other side. So it'll be well, interesting, right? I, Do I don't know. I it mean, works. it sounds like it's just going to be circular after a while. To me, that gets kind of boring. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I think I don't like right. circular arguments. To me, I'm just like, why am I talking? We're we're not getting anywhere. We're just chasing our own tails. Uh, well, <laughs> now. People have an interest in it. I don't know. All right, well, that's a different topic. So let's move on here. Um, this one doesn't require too much uh, talk about because okay, we got 20 to go through or something like that. Or 18. Um, the lame teenager. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you want, but when am I? <laughs> That's the lame teenager. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like clever retorts, right? I even, even on a dissing video or something when they, you know, they have something clever. I, I like, for example, Nathan um, Oakley, uh, and this is not a slight against him at all, but he's a flat earther, and I don't want to mention too many names, but this is actually positive. Uh, he actually had a video sliding some some uh, ball earthers and having to do with the the hangout that I had with him. It was a genius. It was good. It was really good. I like that kind of retort, right? Um, and even people that I showed it, they're in it. They're like, that's pretty good, <laughs> you know, even for a flat earther. But when you just, you know, have this really lame retort, <laughs> yeah, I'm rubber, you're glue kind of thing. That's <laughs> It's like, eh, whatever. Right? What I like about this one is it says, warning, sometimes a lame teenager is really a 40-year-old guy. I exactly, I <laughs> do not, like just a couple of days ago, there's this one guy who follows around after we did that interview with Vaughn. And he keeps like, you're drunk a peasant wannabes. I'm like, is that all you got to offer? I hear that like, a lot of is, that, is that all the insult? Like, How is that you're the only insult? one that's saying it now. That's a compliment, though. <laughs> Matter of fact, he, <laughs> TJ Jerk Kirk knows who you are. He's shouted out to you. By the way, he's doing a segment for our podcast, right? And we will be promoting your channel more. Um, once he does a segment for our podcast, um, he's actually doing two, I think. Um, eventually, hopefully, we can like maybe try to coax him into being on your show. Yeah, um, it, it, you wouldn't mind that, right? No, I wouldn't mind it. Um, we and he he finally he stopped for a long time, and he finally came back, and I guess he took a look at Patreon. He's like, "Huh, huh drug peasant wannabes, you only made twenty eight dollars on Patreon. That's how much your show's worth." I was like, "Do you really have nothing better to say? Like, really come good. back." When you imagine have an insult, I, I gotta tell you, when people talk about your Patreon, <laughs> they have nothing else to talk about because exactly. that is got to be the dumbest thing in the world to even care about people having Patreon, about their financial conditions. It's none of their freaking business. It's it's at the point where people are, are complaining about your Patreon. Move on. <laughs> That's jealousy. Move the fuck. That's off. saltiness. I mean, seriously, people it's, it's like, you're demonetized. I'm like, I don't have a thousand followers, <laughs> nor do I have ten thousand views. I'm really not worried about. Being being demonetized because they weren't giving me money anyway. Oh, you know, what, you know what, demonetization does affect people in various ways. I mean, it does suck when you have a, something you put out, and I'm not talking about specifically myself, but people that I've known <laughs> that put out big videos, and the second it goes out, you know, they've lost 10,000 freaking views because it's been demonetized. Um, it happens, right? And I think YouTube needs to fix that ASAP. See, but yeah, but people talk about your Patreon, they need to go. They need to be. What I, I usually find, what I find interesting. Stupid. I get more views on Periscope than I do <laughs> YouTube. So I stream to Periscope, YouTube, and Facebook all simultaneously. So it's like. So are you? Are, you know, do you do you call your Patreons minions? 
Because I got sick well, of fans, so you had to have the mini. <laughs> well, I have different them? levels. You know, it's like I have different levels of rewards, but also my patrons get Which, um, various things. You know, they get. They, I also mail them stuff. Do you have? Do you have, do you have one level called Ball Washer? <laughs> no. Okay. Steve. Right. I, I got that level. <laughs> like, that might be level. your level, yeah, but you know, I don't need that. So. <laughs> that's like a super minion. Um, okay, so um, the feeding, you got that? You have that level, Geek Room? I don't even want to know your. No, I'm just <laughs> I've seen your videos. I oh my god, you have like. <laughs> you know what? I can't. I don't. I, case oh, we got to get one. I can't even time. say they're so bad. My patrons get exclusive content, yes, but they also, you know, they get other perks and rewards. You know, I, I have like mugs and stuff. So, yeah, see, I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to get one of your mugs or something. I. I <laughs> Do you help. want a mug, Steve? Yeah, we're Do gonna. We're gonna go, well, when 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 you we want get a mug we, with my mug on it. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I tell you, when we when we start getting bigger, hopefully, which is a goal. I mean, I've been putting for a lot of effort. To have in the next year or two to, to really grow a lot um i really will be supporting a lot of other channels and be a patron of them and things of that nature because that's the whole goal is to raise everybody up so i want to i want to be able to say yeah i'm a patreon to mel right because i like her content I, i'm a patreon to the geek room because i like their content um and i think they're going to be very huge as well so yeah this is this is something that like um is everybody can get on board with so you know, go go especially the geek room why are you not giving a buck to the geek room people go over to his channel for god's sake i mean yeah the effort these guys put in their freaking things are this incredible give them a goddamn dollar or two <clears throat> okay that's my promotional for you <laughs> i appreciate it that's I the know. collection plate that's the collection. <laughs> well people pe people now watching this you know they've been very generous no no question about it but we're if people, people later on when we have thousands of more coming into the community we have uh, i'll give you the events coming up here and we have events dealing with uh, two different events and they're about ninety thousand people each so it's going to be huge <clears throat> okay so um the next one's called the feeding self-feeding troll yes <sighs> Those are the worst. And here's the thing. Here's the thing about a lot of these trolls. Now, having been a victim of online stalking with somebody I knew, okay, I knew a person um, and they ended up being like an online predatory type. Okay. They made so many fake accounts. Lots. I, I think I actually had to get the police involved. I mm. got is probably around 35 to 40 fake Twitter accounts that they generated in order to try to um, a follow. I had to lock personal accounts, Facebook, Twitter, all kinds of stuff. They generated all of these accounts to try to follow me, to, to weasel their way in. Um, they were trying to contact my friends, my family. And what they do is... <laughs> This person was a male. Um, he would generate female accounts and talk to himself. <laughs> oh so, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he would talk, he would have conversations with himself to make himself look important <laughs> to wait, other wait, people. Wait, wait, wait. This, this sounds funny. This sounds funny, but this spilled <laughs> over into like my university life, my oh, personal life. Wow. That's and he was, you know, and, and then it became, he was, he's, he's a sociopathic narcissist. Um, I had to get lawyers involved. So um, it, it, it got really crazy because well, well, he was trying well, to stalk my Facebook, my Twitter. He, he pretended to be a woman once and watched a periscope <laughs> to find out where I was going to be. And I'm like, women don't really talk like this. This is weird. And so, um, so, I mean, and he was, he lives in another country. So I had to find a lawyer that lived in that country to file a police report for me. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it can, it can become quite problematic. I think, I think well, we all know that people can make an av any kind of avatar. Right. But the thing is, is that if you click the, the nice thing is if you click on that profile, you can tell us the report real person or not. And I know, trust me on that. People have, have done it to all of us. Oh, 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 hey, Steve McCray is in the live feed. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, that's not me. You know, <laughs> you know that's, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching because I people know I, I, I try to watch their, their stuff. Um, but I, we've, we've all had it happen. But 
uh, you could tell it does get confusing though because if it's exactly the same it's like which one's which and then you got to click on each profile and but yeah people that do do that so i the next one the board hater <laughs> i have so many of those I, and i like i you know this is funny i noticed this. it says this guy loves to make problems um and then it says his arsenal includes racism, sexism, homophobia, and religious intolerance. And I'm like, the very first sentence, isn't that sexist? This guy? But why isn't it? Uh, these are people who love to make problems. Why is it just guys that are the word hanger? I think this article is biased. I think it's sexist and they'd be taken down. Let's troll them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so have you run across this type? Yeah. The bored hater, people that don't have anything better to do than just yep. yell at you. Yeah. I, was, you know, I think that's probably very common. <laughs> a lot of gamers have a problem with this, especially on Twitch. If you go to a Twitch, they'll um cause Twitch is really strict. Even if it happens in your um chat room, they'll kind of get you for it, but they'll just kind of come in. And I see it more with gamers, but they'll come in and just start saying random racial slurs and stuff like that. And and they will actually just keep saying it until it just fills up. <laughs> and it is it's, it's stupid. It's, so like 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 it says they're bored they have nothing better to do and they just want to just do something idiotic yeah it's just bored haters they they really have nothing better to do than they're almost like the rabid flamers aren't they yeah <laughs> they're, like, they're I, less hateful yeah. they just like the post hateful stuff so they're not like i'm mad at you and i'm just like i'm just gonna just spam your chat with this bunch of racist stuff yeah just so. to see if you give me any attention i'm relevant and they're screaming at you <laughs> so like, pay attention to me while i sit here and eat twinkies and daddy didn't pay attention to me so you know, i'm going to fuck people on the internet yeah, I, I'm wondering if a lot of women who have a you know a upbringing reasons why they do a lot of this stuff all right next one um this one's this one's uh okay nelly McNeggerson. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually sure <laughs> with the N E G G E R son. Ne McNeggerson. Nellie likes to show her displeasure by nag negging every Craigslist post you've ever made. Um, this is the nagger? YouTube, the YouTube thumbs down people right there. That's yeah, the Nellie. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 Um, she might even make multiple accounts so she can neg you four or five times. <laughs> thumbs down. Right there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to say about that one really. It's just like they they follow any post. They go back to post you've done four years ago and re re. Um, you know how if you like have a thread that's like four weeks old or whatever, and you put something on it, it kind of like you know puts it back up to the top and lets everybody knows you know you've posted on it. They reactivate stuff that's been dead for like long time. You know. All right, the next one, the sharing troll. Yeah, those are scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, these are basic. This is basically a doxer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Doxers are, are kind of it, they're they're very problematic, um, especially you know if you have you know for instance is if we look at the LGBTQ community, um, if somebody has a space where they're trying to express themselves, and you have somebody that finds out that that account is linked to another person. And then they dox them to their friends and family. That can be very traumatizing and problematic, especially if they're not out to their family. Um, so you, you do run into issues um, that that can be be very very abusive with those particular sharing trolls. You can also have people that might have a space where they express themselves in a in a non societal conforming kind of way, like again LGBTQ people. Um, they might be posting stuff if they can't, they contact their work, um, depending on where you live and where you work, it can, it can be problematic. It can affect your job. It can affect your interpersonal relationships with your family, as well as any other personal relationships. So the sharing troll can be inherently really, really dangerous to a person in regards to their personal privacy. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, that's it's awful. Yes, to me, yeah. this is even though it's number ten on the list. I think this is actually the most toxic. Yeah, control. this this one's really rad. Yeah. Michael, go ahead real quick. There should have be. You read uh, this, Michael, um, 
Yeah, I, I have. And I think there should be, uh, you know, consequences for some of the things that, you know, we're talking about here. I mean, you're talking about completely ruining somebody's long you draw that line. And, you know, I find that to be a growing uh, growing trend. Like, where do we stop this kind of bullying and stuff? I mean, it, that's what it can. It can lead to a lot more serious things than just a comment we might not like. Oh, There's, yeah. Absolutely. There's very yeah. little that you can do uh, unless you actually have their information. Um, uh, trust me, if there's a doctor out there, there's someone that's mad at them, that's probably not them. Uh, I'm not saying try to go get the doctor or anything, but at the same if you're talking about legal ramifications or some kind of uh, punishment, there is very little that you can do unless you actually have their uh, names and stuff like that. Uh, once you have their name and such, then you can kind of uh, kind of bring it up in the in the court system and yeah. get, uh, get some kind of legality, like you know, slander or just if they're putting out your personal information, um, that can easily be someone can pick it up and then your you got credit cards in your name that you didn't even sign up for. Um, so there is something you swatting. Yeah, swatting. There's stuff you can do, but it's it's you had to have their name. Unfortunately, yeah. which is uh, very hard to get. Here's, here's the person. thing from personal experience and having dealt with um, police in regards to um, a, a certain sociopathic narcissist who was emailing me at my university and pretending to be a police officer calling. I, I told you I stopped doing that, Mel. Stuff like that. <laughs> well, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I got the police involved. They did this. Okay, they did this. Nothing. Nothing yeah, I think, happened. I think, I think they try to. So, I, mean, I think, well, I think they, they they don't want to get involved. But I think that nowadays, because it's beginning more popular, and especially because of the, the, the death that happened, the swatting. I think they okay, have. Okay, no this was now. two years ago. Okay, well, it wasn't even two years ago. It was less than two years ago that this happened to me, Steve. And, um, I was being harassed at my university by a sociopathic narcissist who I said no thank you to. And he had people pretend to be police officers calling me at my lab and emailing me at my university and harassing me in that regard. The police did nothing. They did nothing. And so I had to go to the chair of my department and talk about this crazy person who is harassing me in my lab in the event that he decided to call the chair and have words. Yeah. They really, so, they really need to, they really need to figure out this. Look, we all know harassment. occurs. Yeah. <laughs> so, all, I mean, we, oh, on, that's we all, what I'm saying. Well, There's nothing, fair, is, There's not, nothing there. This yeah. person lived in another country. And so it's just, but to be you fair, Mel, and this is, of course isn't your situation, but we do know that false charges occur as well. So they have, that's they have exceedingly to be rare. That's exceedingly I know, I know, but they, I get that. But they need to figure out a way where they didn't get involved. They make the determinations if they've really like kind of like a grand jury theory. Is there something to even go forward, even even look at? Because um <laughs> and I think a lot of times, maybe like two years ago, the police don't want to get involved, but now again. I don't think they have a choice in the matter. They have to get involved. But I also want no, to say that they don't. Thing. They don't. I mean, I have a 17 page document. I have a 17 page document. I no, continue I, to document I mean, stuff I mean, and it doesn't I mean, matter. I mean, so. the optics and for the fact that they need to start getting involved. I don't think they have a choice anymore to ignore it because of social outcry. That's what I mean. I mean, they can do it. I'm, I'm not saying they have a legal people reason. People are louder. People are louder about it, yeah, but they're, is, they're not doing anything legal. about it. That's a, that's my point. They're really not doing anything about it. Yeah. I'm so just, I, I'm ex I'm very very quiet about where I work. I'm very quiet about what I'm doing you're because I have to be. That. Because you're, I have to be. Because I have crazy people you, you, <laughs> come you, after you, me. Was there a NASA shell or Illuminati shell? I don't remember. You know, it's just it, there's there are people that will try to hurt me because I'm a woman and a scientist. This is, is the thing is that, that a bad that combo to them for some reason. I, you know, I, apparently I'm not allowed to have brains and I should be in the kitchen making a sandwich. <laughs> I don't know. As long as, long as it's a, <laughs> damn, <laughs> I mean, you make a damn good sandwich. That's cool. Right. Uh, I am a chemist. Yeah, I make I, absolute <laughs> martinis. Damn straight. That's I can crazy. cook. People that know science are better cooks usually, um, and better, better. Uh, I can marinate uh, the crap out of a steak, baristas. man. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like, like next one. Um, 
I'm gonna, I, you know what? One of these days, I'm gonna try her damn margaritas. Um, <laughs> the the next, oh god, that, I can you imagine having it like a person that actually understands chemistry, you know, the perfect balance between like the mix and the alcohol, and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next one, the profane screamer. Oh, yeah. I like these guys. <laughs> this is the one. This is one of my favorites too, because I tell you, and I, 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 I'll see what Mel's experiences with this is. When I see somebody like literally typing all caps, I'm just automatically almost to the next comment. <laughs> I'm done. I don't, it's like I don't bother to read it. I'll tell you guys now. If most times, if they're all in caps, I'll even delete the comment. Um, if it's that egregious, because it's all it is at that point is distracting from all the other comments. It's it's meant to, oh, look at me. I have something important to say. It's not just a certain words that we all emphasize. It is the whole two paragraph in 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 a uh, in in all caps. It's got to go. This is wild, Bill, because he he typed to me in all caps. Oh, God. <laughs> After putting my name in quotation marks, like geek, and I was like, okay, Bill. So do you get that a lot, Mel? Too people like think using all caps makes the argument stronger. So, sometimes I do, and I'm just I'm like, why are you screaming at me through the internet? I don't understand why is this. <laughs> I, I I vastly ignore people. See, that's the thing. I vastly ignore the majority of trolls. Or if I do engage with them, I usually quote tweet them and I'm like, here's an example of what not to do. So yeah. <laughs> please don't do this or look at this person. This person is saying things that are very, very not correct. Here's the correct information. This is what we call a learning moment. So usually... Very, very not correct. Hey, real quick, uh, Aravine, uh, is li the live chat still working for a lot of people, right? Because I have, I have like yeah, five people I'm, now. Yeah, I'm able to read the live chat. Yeah, I have five people, people as I know. They're getting an internal server error. I had three yesterday. I, I have no control over that. It's I don't know what's going on. Um, um, so, as far sorry. as I know, I'm able to see everyone's comments okay. and... Uh, the are they, are, are, is there, everybody is there like 41 trolls in the uh, live chat right now uh, no. i'm just kidding i got so many i got so many mods it's ridiculous like a <laughs> sea of blue um you know i'm still gonna internal I, yeah you get anyone see it's weird i i don't know and uh this happened yesterday as well and so if anybody people on their channels have these issues please let me know um i don't know what to do to solve it uh, i don't think it's anything on my end to even solve it with but i the next one and i will tell you this one I had suffered from this one a little bit. Um, was it that I was trolling? Is this the? It's, it's we all do it. Um, this one's called the White Knight. <laughs> yeah, I this one I actually made a playing card. I actually made a magic <laughs> playing card about Steve and the White Knight. Um, it's like you know you feel like you have to jump in in a conversation to protect somebody, um, and so uh, th this this one is like. Um, if, if the white knight thinks someone hurts someone's feeling, he'll put on his shining armor and joust for honor and goodness, even if the attack person tells him to shut up. <laughs> so I, 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 I think I've actually done that a couple of times. Um, but once somebody says, you know, don't need it, I can handle it. Uh, you know, you move on. Right. I, I, well, I, I have, I have kind of like dual feelings about the white knight thing. Um, if you see, okay. Being a woman, I get all kinds of interesting harassment that men don't get. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't think you guys get like, oh wow, you know, she looks so hot with her goggles on, you know. Uh, people tell, are you kidding me? Uh, I'm about that right here. all the time. Are you, what are you kidding? <laughs> Half my well, comments, you, God, you look sexy with goggles. Just, so it's like I got hit you on know, by Pip Monk. So <laughs> yeah, he got yeah. hit on by Pip Monk. You know. Okay. On. Well, maybe this is an in in right, no, correct. Ahead. Statement. But what I'm saying is I often get harassment in the forms of the sexual connotation. So for me, I don't mind and I don't see it as a white knight for other men to step up and say, dude, that's inappropriate. Yeah, no, I agree um, with you. I agree with you. And I, and that's to what me, I people, we people. need more of that. We need more of that to, for guys to call out other guys for I, inappropriate I comments. I am on board with you on that, Mel. Check, me, check it. Yeah. Okay. I believe that very, that very strongly what you just said, right? Um, however, there are some people on the other side that that will take offense to that, going, I don't need your help or, or blah, blah, blah. And I'm cool with that too. Step back at that point, right? 
I understand. Well, see, I, that's where communication is important. And if you know the person that you're talking to, or if you're friends with somebody, you're like, okay, yeah, I know. But this it's going to make because a lot of men nowadays are afraid to stand up. I, I'm the chivalrous type, right? I mean, open door for a lady, um, you know, pull the but shit see, off from them. That's just who I am. To me, that's not chivalry. I'll open up an, a door for an old lady. That's just called manners. You're, well, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, no, open, up a, a, I'll a, open up a door for an old man with, a, yeah. with groceries. I mean, but, I, mean know, I, just, me, I think I think it is a respectful thing that in our in you know in our society from years ago that it was the right thing to do. You go out to dinner, you you pull the chair off the lady, you open the door for her, and stuff like that. Just the way I was raised. Not everybody has to do it that way. Why would anybody find offense with that? I don't know, but I think you're right. This one is probably the the least trolling out of all of them. I think it's only the point where they go beyond the uh, oh hey you know what maybe that was inappropriate. And they don't let it go when somebody's told them, I've got this. Once they tell you, right. the woman tells you, you've got it, let them do that. their own thing. Mel's a strong woman. If Mel says, hey, Steve, I really appreciate it. You're right. Let me take it from here. Here you go, girl. You know, you're yeah. all your, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, is that, is I, that I cool? give them like my, like, my right uppercut, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is, is I will mother. defeat you with graphs and pie charts. Science. And you should see oh, my P values. Yep. <laughs> oh, now they're going to say, oh, look, Mel wants you to check out her P value. Um, so you think that's a good idea though, Mel? I mean, is that, you agree that's appropriate for way? For me, okay, for me, okay, so I, I did a talk on online stalkers and sexual assault um, uh, just a little while ago. That was right after, I think, the troll talk. Um, it was something that's kind of, because we see a lot of increased amount of that type of thing and, and, and people don't know how to handle that. And, and it's dialogue we need to have. And it was with somebody who is a good guy who's like, I don't know what's okay and, and how to handle that. So as a good guy and how that personally affects them, because, you know, this is traumatizing for good men as well to see the me too movement and all this sort of thing. Like there it's put like a very real face um, to, to, to something that, you know, good men haven't had to deal with. So for me, this is where if you're in, if you're friends with a woman and you're going in and you're like, hey, that's inappropriate. I don't want you talking to my friend that way. That's completely natural. Now, if your friend's like, I got this. It's OK. Yeah, you're right, Steve. You should back up. Like, okay, she's got this. Oh, but, I, I love doing that at that point. I'm like, hey, take it away. I'll sit back and I'll yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and, and eat popcorn and watch Mel destroy this person. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. That you know, just that's so, pure, pure entertainment awesomeness. Um yeah, so that's fine too. So, but that's where communication is key. And and so understanding where those boundaries are with the people that you're involved with. You just don't go swooping in. But sometimes so people do know. that. Sometimes people do that. But if you know, and that's where you know you you have that discussion about what is okay, what is not okay, what the boundaries are. Right. But if it's somebody, you know, for instance, if it's somebody that's ruthlessly being assaulted verbally on the internet, that's racial slurs and stuff like that with somebody that maybe you don't know so well, it's still, to me, it's still okay to call them out on that. I totally because, agree. Absolutely. You know, yep. I don't, it, but, but if you're mansplaining, and, and in a way to where it's like, word. like saying, Mel, she's just a cute little redhead. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Mel's let's let's, let's us, a sandwich at the let's, moment. Let let's let's, let's let these boys yeah. sort this out so she can cry in the corner over uh, there with right, her Mel, feelings. The, the men have the men <laughs> got this. We're back off. Men have got this. The right. men have got men this. Go, go sit over there and make yourself look yeah. pretty. That's where it becomes white night, and you're like, "Hold on now." I, I know this is going a little off topic. I'm gonna try to get back on here in a second, but you know, it, 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 somebody, if you get a chance, watch this video where they mock that kind of scenario from the '50s. It's like this, everybody's sitting at the table, and the and the and the woman, you know, all proper and, and pristine and prim or whatever. Um, she has the audacity to speak out, and right, and all the men are like. That? It, it, oh, I'll have to find this video. It's brilliant. It's so hilarious because it, you can't tell. Well, I mean, it's kind of maybe you can tell it's more as a modern video that was set in the 50s thing, but it was hilarious, you know. The and at the you know, the moment the man, the woman decides to interject her own opinion, something it's it's hilarious. Oh, that's you know, that's overstep her bound. <laughs> um, the next one. Oh, <laughs> this, this is the one we probably see the most the expert. 
<laughs> oh my god! Expert knows everything and everything, uh, and loves to share his knowledge. Again, why does it keep on using his rather than, you know, a, a, a neutral pronoun? But whatever. Okay. Uh, so his knowledge. I, I encounter more male trolls than I do female that's, that's trolls. Right. If I'm honest, Wait, he's a lawyer, a doctor, a senator, a pro ball player, a historian, an engineer, and in reality, of course, he's unemployed temp living with his mom. <laughs> uh i've seen this a lot um like you said we all have areas that we we like more and have knowledge more of um uh, but we but does somebody say look at they they know something because this um like for doctor my dad was an architect um i guess we went to school for although he didn't do professionally but he went to architect school he was a great draftsman uh he he started a, a corporation called Simplector technologies and uh i have no uh, skill to draw Right, I got none of that. I couldn't tell you the first thing about drafting or, or stuff like that. And so just because my dad had that ability, how the hell does that make me an expert in the topic? And I was around it all my life. You know, my dad had drawings everywhere, technical blueprints or whatever the hell. And he would design, he has eight, he had like eight patents, right? Um, oh, phone quake or something. Um, <laughs> No, they weren't sniped. Uh, but but yeah, I, I really weird when I you know when somebody says, oh my 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 mom and dad were this, therefore um, I'm an expert as well. It's weird. Well, I think we have a you know especially the ones that I interact with, we we call them armchair scientists. Um, well, I'm an art. I, I don't mind that term. I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm not a scientist by any means, but I love science. Well, science enthusiasts is what I would prefer, but That's people who sit mean. there and and tell me that they know more about nanoparticle technology than I do, and that was like part of my research. <laughs> but I don't think armchair scientists has to be pejorative. I think even scientists say, "Hey, you know, we we do like armchair scientists trying to do, um, you know, a little bit of science, right? It doesn't make them an expert. It's, it's like um, the uh, the whole SETI thing, trying to to find alien life. They divvy it up among amateur astronomers and just people that want to use their computer power for that right Those well are all we do have citizen scientists yeah, and i have an entire right. video yeah. just on that with that was in coordination with the crick institute in london when i toured it back in october i worked with somebody and tried to promote their project in regards to citizen science that's different but for somebody who is a citizen scientist or citizen science involved saying that they know more than an expert oh, that's a different story. that becomes right. a problem that's what i'm kind of getting at saying that somebody's going to explain to me something that they think they know more of than a person who actually works in that field that's far different far 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 and away different and it's one thing for say yes. look you know i like science and all about it and i and i and I just, I'm trying to, to question why you're saying something and getting to the heart of it. There's another say, Hey, look at, I know you got a PhD and you know, and I never went to even high school and let me tell you why you're wrong. That's a whole different <laughs> story. Oh, and by yes, the way, and I, I, I mm -hmm. just now, uh, for, I, I figured out a way maybe to get around that, that 500 error guys. Um, I tried logging into a different account. Um, and for some reason it works. So if you're having a 500 error, uh, Try logging into a different uh, YouTube account. That might take care of it because I just I just tried it and it seemed to work. So, I uh, yeah, I'm able to see the chat just fine. So it's interesting. It worked for me if I wasn't logged in for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really like I said. I just logged to a different account and it came up. So if you're having mm. a problem right now, uh, log to a different account because um, okay. I couldn't read the chat the entire time until just right now. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Um, the spoiler. Oh God. Yeah, the people who want to destroy Star Wars for you. Yeah, you yeah. It. This is the spoiler <laughs> that goes around and says, "Let me, let me tell you what happened in this movie I just watched. Let me tell you about the twist." Oh God. You know? I've but actually okay. accidentally done that once, and I thought everybody watched the show, and I got yeah, I dropped, so you much know what help. I, cost. I saw movies that are fifty years ago. I avoid it, right? Even like, like for example. If I say something like along the lines of a, uh, you know, uh, it's a sled, you know, few people might know what the reference is, right? Dun, dun. You know, but it's a spoiler, right? No, yeah. Get that reference. It's a, it was a sled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. So I'm oh. sorry. I oh. lose points. I really? lose points. Yeah. I, I, think. Well, I don't I mean. so give a spoiler. It's been 50 years since that movie came out. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> I didn't exist then. All right. Okay. Before your time. But I mean, <laughs> any kind of spoiler, right? Um, 
People yeah, love and it. I got this happened to me it's, on the it's adult a, it's swim a boards. No kind of spoiler. Okay, so I used to be on the adult swim boards, and I actually got quoted on Adult Swim <laughs> for one of the chats that I was doing at one point in time. I'm so quite proud of that. Um, so on their little bump cards that they would do, I got quoted on that once on the Adult Swim boards. But somebody ruined Harry Potter for me <gasps> on the adult swim <laughs> boards. I didn't actually oh, read no. the books. And they were talking about the Order of the Phoenix before the film came out. And I'm reading like, spoilers! What's what? wrong with you? I haven't read the book and I'm not going to do that till after I see the film. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, let me tell you what happened in the last 15 movies that came out this week. So, <laughs> no, you're right. You're, and uh, I don't know why they get a perverse sense of enjoyment out of that. I just find it to be strange. We didn't even have the Order of the Phoenix yet. And they're talking about, you know, spoilers from the novel. Oh, I thought, do you know what? There's <laughs> a lot of people who, if you watch The Walking Dead, you do not get on uh, Facebook for at least 24 hours until you watch it. Because there's people who will just be like, oh, I, I've oh my God, this guy died. And you're like, oh. I've had shows that I have purposely <laughs> gone out of my way not to look up because I didn't want the spoiler, you know, that I missed. And, I, and I'll, I'll watch. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been in that situation, right? You know? Wasn't, but there, just, wasn't there like a fight? Okay, so for The Force Awakens, wasn't there a fight that happened in a movie theater because somebody gave the spoiler <laughs> oh, sure. about, about Han I don't know, Solo? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> and somebody punched him in the face? You know, I don't want <laughs> anything about it. Um, I don't. I probably won't ever watch it. I'm not a big modern Star Trek fan or Star Wars fan anymore. But um, but a positive spoilers, I'm okay with it. For example, like I'll give a positive spoiler. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I, I happen to watch like shows like uh, um, How to Get Away with Murder and, and those kind of shows. If you haven't watched the last episode, the last like minute or even 30 seconds brilliant i i had I, it was like oh shit i had no idea even though there was in the news prior about what was happening i didn't i didn't hear anything about it and i was like wow this is cool it was just a, it was unexpected it was awesome so that was a po positive spoilers right i have no issue with people saying things like that um i'm not gonna tell you what happened but it was really good, you know, it's good i was really upset with all the spoilers for the titanic and the alamo uh, I, I can like, tell you right now. I'm gonna right spoil the whole Titanic movie for you. The ship sinks. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Spoiler That's alert. What that that ship, was that was that was sarcasm, Steve. It just yeah. you know I'm gonna let yeah. it fly around so, the room. So it over your head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How's your sandwich? Right. How's your sandwich making coming along? It's it's terrible because I haven't moved from the seat. I'll try using the force a bit more. Are you kidding me? Okay, the next one, um, the fraud, um, also known as the romance scammer, the deposed Nigerian prince. The fraud takes pleasure in robbing people of their cash or self-respect. Um, oh God! Yeah, this is this is definitely we we get the emails on this all the time. We have um, obviously our kit roommate got got uh, ejected. Uh, one of our roommates and so we now have the room for rent and the landlord sends the the request to me um from now on so i can kind of check out that and some of these are scams i mean actually most of them have been scams and it's the same wording with different people right um so it's a fraud it's definitely a fraud it's a troll fraud it's weird you know i've gotten i've gotten those types of frauds in my emails when i was at university to where there was somebody sending me an email i need you to tutor so and so like my daughter she's in the us and i'm in this country and i'm gonna pay you this but i need you to do it this way and it's like all of these weird like backflips of finances i'm like yeah this is this is kind of really sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And so, <laughs> it's weird. It's, it's, it's weird how they think that they can still get away with it. But I guess, you know, oh, I know why here, I, I, here's yeah. the story. Of this, and we're getting so close. We're, we're, we're fast running out of time, but um, here's how, how somebody explained this to me. And I thought this was brilliant. Uh, when I looked into this, the, the Nigerian prince scam, right? People think, how can anybody be so dumb to fall for that when people know about it, right? And I used to think that way too. And I was like, okay, you know, explain to me why it, it, um, it still works. And this was brilliant. The reason why it still works is because those types of people are looking for the false, they're not looking for the false positives. They're looking for people that are so willing to give, you know, 
the benefit of the doubt or, or maybe even mentally have had problems or senile or whatever the issue is, they're looking for that very rare person that will respond, not for the people that are, that, you know, will respond uh, because they, they're putting out um, something that seems legit. They're putting out something they know is over the top. Right. And they were looking for the people that are so willing to look over past that being over the top that they're willing to respond. So they eliminate any false positives. They're trying to be to the point where it sounds a little bit ridiculous. And I thought that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, to a degree, sometimes there's this morbid fascination. And I find this in, <laughs> especially when I'm dealing with narcissists. And they sit there, the mental backflips that you go through on them trying to blame you for their own behavior. Like, what are they going to well, say yeah, now? Is, yeah, this is you know, so it's like, this is, I, it's, for, this is person for looking for a financial scam, though. Right, financial right. Scam. Well, I mean, with financial scams, sometimes it's, it's interesting to email back and forth just to see what happens. I believe there was um, a reporter who went through that who just was curious to see just how far they would go. And I need to find that article for you to where he was like, okay, so you want me to send all this money where? And, and so <laughs> he just continued the conversation for like a month hmm. just to see what the person would say yeah, just I, I, out I, of, I, out of morbid fascination. And for me, that's, that's kind of probably the route I would go. I was just like, you know, what is he going to say that's now? <laughs> That would make a very good video. Get one of these things and you document each step on how. Yeah, I have to find. I, I have to find. He did do a YouTube video. Yeah. I need to find it for you. <laughs> All right. So number 16. We're getting close, guys. Um, the flutter. <laughs> the flutter is somebody who goes in and basically types in L-O-L-R-O-T-F-L -L or something like that over and over and over and over and over. And over. Yes. That's oh, their argument. <laughs> lol, lol, lol. Um, these people that like the lulls um, and there are a lot of lulls cows out there. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. We all do like, you know, we like milking the lulls cow a little bit. That's not trolling. That's just pointing out the fact that people say some pretty damn, you know, stupid stuff, especially when it comes to science. Oh my God. Um, I, I, if you, if you think the earth is flat, I happen to think that's lulls worthy. I just, you know, and, and worse, the things that they say to justify the earth gives its own light or um, the, the, the sun is like 3000 miles away, that kind of stuff. Right. It's just, so yeah, it's it's worth laughing over, right? But that's different than going into a post and typing LOL 50,000 times. That's the flutter, right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't quite understand the appeal of that from the flutter aspect, <laughs> other than just to be a jerk and, and God, irritate the crap out of everybody on purpose. Um, yeah, it's it almost goes with the lame teenager kind of um, mentality. They're re they're related, I think. Yeah, because the, yeah, the, the lame so. teenager has nothing important to say, so they type some stupid shit. Um, this is the same thing. LOL, over and over and over again. This is pretty stupid. All right, next one. Um, the liar. Uh, the liar is the most common troll. He loves to lurk in brainless high school girl. Oh, excuse me. He loves to lure in brainless high school girls by pretending he's a romantic twenty-year-old sensitive poet. The liar is fairly harmless as long as he doesn't meet you in real life uh, kind of thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Liars. Liars. Well, here, here's another I don't thing. Date, so I don't know about this one that much. So go ahead. What's your experience? Okay. In this here's the thing in, in regards to some of these trolls there, they can overlap in types. You can have a liar. That's a self feeding troll. And we're going to get to the stalker here in a minute and the retroactive stalker. You can have a troll that has several oh, of yes. these characteristics. They're not, they're not mutually exclusive, I think. No, they're not mutually exclusive. So when you have a liar, they tend to be a little bit of probably, it's, it's the borderline dangerous type, um, especially when you're, when you're dealing with online predators, whether it be for kids or for adults. Um, and then that kind of can also fall into the fraud um maybe not to the extent as what the fraud would say yeah but know, it, it does touch on the fraud if you're portraying yourself fraud. to be you're, you're catfishing that's that's you're portraying yourself something different than what you know you are that's that's a form right. for for whatever reason right. um monetary romance whatever it doesn't matter so, I, I mean, you can have all of these different types of trolls kind of overlap 
into an, an individual. Um, so it's, it's actually, it's actually quite scary when you start to see the dangerous aspects and liar to me tends to be it. You can have the liars that are just bored haters. Okay. Right. And then you can have the liars that are stalkers and, you know, sharing trolls that, that are kind of wrapped up into a very toxic individual. And so um, that's, that's where you have to kind of look for signs. Um, signs being, what do they know about you? Um, what well, exactly is this? Stalker. Yeah. What do they know about yeah, you? So, yeah. So when we get to the stalker, I'll probably have a bit more information about it. And yeah. I had a whole episode just on those yeah, let's, types. Let's Let's actually go right there. Um, the, I, I don't agree with this statement. This says the stalker is the only truly dangerous troll. I disagree with that. I think a, a lot of these can be dangerous. The, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most egregious and the most harmful. Um, but you can make an argument for a couple of the other ones too. But this one is somebody who actually go and hack your computer, uh, you know, open up credit cards in your name, find you in real life. Uh, this is somebody that would, you know, kill your dog. Uh, this is somebody who will post private pictures of you, uh, private conversations. Uh, yes. you know, the, these are the, the, these are the ones that are literally the, the biggest cyber bullies. Yes. Um, and they tend to not be just stalkers. They can also be liars. They can be self-feeding trolls. They can be, um, doxers. They, they can be all of those things wrapped into one. It's never just one thing. So while we're talking about these categories, it's important to understand that people are inherently complex. Um, and so I've dealt with sociopathic narcissists. I've dealt with the stalker doxing types who search the internet to find more information about me. I've, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with just the petty irritating kind that's nothing compared to the dangerous types where you have to get the police involved <laughs> that's way different um so for me i i tend to not engage with stalkers but there are certain types that draw you in the predatory types that feed on that attention there are certain patterns that they do where they'll look out for individuals to where they can get to feed their ego in regards to paying attention to them, getting that attention. Those are the liars. The liars can be stalkers too. And that's where you have a very dangerous mix, especially if it's somebody that you think is your friend. That's where I quote Steve Irwin. You can always expect animals to act like animals. It's the people that pretend to be your friends first before they hurt you. So, so um, you can have somebody that you think is your friend and end up being a stalker, self-feeding troll type that will sh overshare your information and try to hurt you and, and you wouldn't have seen it coming. And so that's like kind of like a, follow up to my troll video being about, we do talk about sexual assault, but we also talk about online stalkers and predators and kind of the warning signs for that and how to recover from that. Cause it's, it's, it's kind of harmful and it's, and it's something that people don't talk enough about, I think. Yeah. Who do you know uh, who you can trust? You know, that's something I'm running into lately. Mm-hmm. You know, who can you trust with, you know, because you do meet a lot of people online exclusively now and you don't know if they're just trying to gather information on you and blast you out there in the air. You know, you never know. Well, Michael, I think you have to do this way. You have to take your best guess. Right. I don't like to I don't want to think I can live through my life not trusting anybody. Right. However, you know, I know have people that have definitely had people affect their their in real life stuff by me by trying to ingratiate themselves with them be their friend um i know one situation mm -hmm. that like i said led to the death of somebody um and th these people are out there uh we we you know when people say look it um you think people are your friends and but you know a lot of them probably aren't you know they they actually don't like you okay great um you know we all know that you, not everybody who pretends to, to like us likes us that's just part of the being human um, you trust the people you trust. And, and then when each person, you know, 
if there's a violation of that, you deal with it accordingly, right? But I don't want to ever go through my life not being able to trust people that I have given my trust to, because there's a lot of people that I trust explicitly. And it's very, very rare is, is that quality of trust violated. And so you have to, say to treat those as exceptions, not the rule, right? Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, just handle it as they come up. And once that trust is broken, then you move forward from there, right? I think a right. lot of times maybe it can, we can get carried away with uh, thinking something's happening that's not, you know? Yeah, and there's different levels of trust. Like I, I've given people my stream key, like the uh, Geek Room has had my stream key where they can stream directly to my channel. Now, yes, I do change it frequently, not because of him, but, um, but you know, that's a trust, right? That's, that's something that I'm saying I trust you enough because I've dealt with you. You've had enough experience with me to know we're honest people that I trust you with my stream key. Cause that's a big empowerment, right? That's like somebody giving you some of your ATM card in that, in that way. Right. Hey, oh, right de now. definitely. My pin number. Go. You can go have, it. okay. You can also have other levels of trust where maybe you've met a person face to face and think, you know, them and turn out that that is not the person that you thought you were, that that's they, true. that you thought they were. Um, so I see this often. And I have people message me about this to where they get involved in relationships that start out online. And even though it's like a long distance thing and they get involved that way, they fly and visit each other and then come to find out everything was a freaking lie. And so they find out that this person has been lying to them this entire time and it could go on for years. Oh, it's, it's a huge stories they, they weave, right? You know, it's, it's, it's something that happens more often than not. And so what do you do if you're a person and that happens to you regularly? So it's just, you know, while I agree that you want to be able to trust people, but at the same time, we have people that put their trust in others. They get involved. They even go and they visit and they spend time and all this stuff happens. And then all of a sudden it's like, this is not the person who I thought this was. Well, it's, it's, like, it's like having an ex-girlfriend or something, right? Like, you know, I've, I've, I've done my share of breakups, right? But I've, after a breakup, I never go around doing revenge porn or something like that, right? Right. Can, and, and that can, that's a real thing that can happen. Um, especially for women on, on the internet. I think it's vile. I think it's very vile to be honest with you. I, it I it is. That. It um, is. And it's, it's a form of sexual assault. Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, and, and I think it's really criminal. I, I really do. I mean, um, there's, there's a point where you are taking somebody's emotional state and using your private, uh, relationship with them to damage their, either their reputation their 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 mm -hmm. sanity it's harmful it is it to me it's it's a it's a type of assault yes it is and so um but but then and then we can talk about the difference between guys versus girls and in, in that regard um it's to a degree uh, you know women to be able to trust a guy um there's a lot more at stake there oh I for them yeah. as I opposed to, to to a guy doing that um so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a very scary world, kids. It's very scary and awful <laughs> things don't, don't can happen. Outside. Don't go out there. <laughs> don't play in the street. So <laughs> anyways, I, I'd like to keep this other two hours. Can we just do really a quick wrap up on, on the 10 tips to dealing with trolls real fast? Sure. I don't know absolutely. if you, I don't know if you, if you looked at this, but I'm going to just go through these real fast. Um, you just tell, give me a brief thing about each one, what you think. Um, the first one is establish a policy, uh, basically what to do. Um, and this one really goes out to Michael cause he's a community uh, leader, establish a policy of how you want to deal with trolls. And this matters if you, you're dealing with the live feed, you're dealing with the community, your own life, establish a policy of what you think needs to be done. Okay. I think that's a good, I think that's good advice, right? Would you, we agree? Yes, absolutely. I Okay, the next one, and this one, okay, and this is one. This these ten are kind of a little bit contradictory, a little bit, and let me explain why. The, I, I think you can't do all of these. I think it's it's each one has to be a different situation. This one I think is the most best. Which, ignore the trolls, right? Um, especially like 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 live feeds, right? I have spanners. If a troll comes in, we obviously know they're a troll. Yeah, get rid of them. Just ignore them by getting rid of them. Just they're done. Um, you don't need to engage with them. Um, it, it, what happens is is that they're looking for that engagement. But if you just click ban or remove or timeout or whatever that engagement's done so i think ignoring is 
is usually the best way to go, right? You just don't want to, you don't want to keep doing responses. You don't want to like have this back and forth. It takes away from the actual conversation and things of that nature, right? That's probably the best advice. Absolutely. I, I, I agree. At some point in time, you have to kind of just cut it loose and not engage. You have, you have a form mail for this. You have a form webpage for this. That you give I out. do. I have a slide that I post, like reasons why I'm not engaging with you. <laughs> I love that. I am stealing that idea. I just have to, I don't, I've started it, but it's not as worded as well as yours. Okay. So next one, make, let, this one's, it says make light, let light of the situation. But I think they mean let, let make light of the situation. Again, you know, if people are like viciously attacking you, that's one thing, but if people are just mocking you or whatever, yeah, just, just play along with it. It's just, don't give them they go don't play into their oh look at mel she's got crazy red hair yeah it's cool you know she's got crazy red hair great you know oh god i've had a real life troll okay as an aside in london okay the, my last trip to london was in october and i went to the world's end which is a bar in camden or a pub in camden i was hanging out with some friends of mine it was right after my tour of the crick institute which was awesome by the way. Um, so I ended up hanging out with some friends of mine and there was this guy at the bar who had been staring at me the entire night and I had sectioned off a table because, you know, I had posted in Facebook for my friends to come and hang out with me. And it, it was like this long table. So this guy walks around the bar, like from the bar, walks around the table and try it. And I'm like, in a bench up against the wall and he's trying to scoot in to sit by me on this bench <laughs> and i listen like and you know and i and i use british slang when i'm in the uk i'm like mate i don't know you please don't sit by me and, so, <laughs> and my friends are sitting there like oh my god because you know i'm the token american and i'm allowed to make a make a scene because i'm an american you get, you get a little and more so, yeah. You know, I, I can play my American card. And he looks at me and goes, why is it going to sit by you? And I'm like, dude, you walked all the way around this table and, and scooted in. And my, and my friend's like, dude, you just look, you know. And so then he looks at me and goes, oh, you're red hair and everything. I don't want to sit by you. I'm like, okay, I don't care. Go away. So then he goes and he stands in front of this door, like the front door to the world end and starts like ranting and going off and i'm like we just ignored him yeah, we just ignored him the entire you know so it's like trolling irl yeah, in real yeah. life so it's uh, just you you have to ignore them after the a while is, the next one is unmask them and, and this is very clear that not to dox people um you, you even if there's this troll you don't want to give out their own personal information there has been a lot of people that have, uh, that there are trolls around the internet and I don't know if it's appropriate to, to, to tell people about their, their real names and where they work. I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things. And, and you know, you're, not, you're not supposed to dox anybody, right? And I think it's, it's generally wrong to do so, of course. Um, but, you know, they, they do thrive on anonymity, right? And if somebody is like putting, um, you know, like false uh, police reports or something like that, uh, you know, do you do you, do you bring the per do you mean do you, do you expose them by giving the person's real name to the police saying who's do this? Um, I, I don't I don't. If know somebody how, how if like somebody is harassing me, if somebody's harassing me and I know who it is, you know there are means and and see I actually I actually had a person in in the case where it got you know where I had to get the police involved as somebody who was a contractor with the FBI to be able to track his ISPs and and that sort of thing to be able to give me that information to where I could give it to the police and they still did nothing. No. So, um, <laughs> so I had somebody who worked with the FBI who was actually forwarding this information to that particular person's country. Um, and they still did nothing. No. Um, but I still kept a list of all the aliases for documentation. So if there's somebody, I'm like, well, this is a suspected individual. They have means to be able to track and find out, you know, if, if they're able to go in and, and get to their laptop computer or whatever, they're still able to do that. That's not doxing an individual by saying, I suspect these accounts are this person. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that, yeah. You know that they they are associated with this particular handle. You're not saying it's their name. You're not giving their phone number. You're not giving their job. You're saying 
there, I, I suspect that these particular long list of accounts are associated with this one. If you have information, please let me know. It may not be the case. Or if you do have definitive information to say these accounts are linked to this one, right. then say so. Right. But you're not giving out their personal information yeah, I, I by saying point. that. So Absolutely. those are aliases. So Absolutely. Okay, so the next mm -hmm. one is uh, don't provide a platform. And this is basically if trolls mm -hmm. uh, you know, are leaving comments, um, this applies to videos, communities, anything like that. Um, uh, you you have every right to to ban them and even remove mm -hmm. egregious comments. That's that's filtering. You have every right to do that. It's not censoring. Um, you know, it's one thing. Hey, this video sucks. Okay, you know that's fine. Uh, but it's another to say. You know, this video sucks. And here's where this person works. Go. Uh, you know, send them a pizza or something. You know, um, those kind of c the trollish comments. Um, it's up to the each individual to let, determine what level of trolling it is. Uh, but you can tell when when people are on troll. Yeah, I have no problem uh, rem removing those types of comments, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it, it you don't want to give them a platform. You don't want them because no. we could look at it. If you're not responding to them, they're going to go find some other video to, to go screw with eventually. Always. That's true. Um, and, and, and that's, uh, you know, I wrote an article on my scientistmail.com talking about why are we giving science deniers a platform? I mean, why are there flat earthers in the news? That is, that is okay. Look at that. So. That is a double sword, which is we should have a hangout just on that one of these days, and we will. But I, I I'm we're so booked <laughs> as part of it because I don't want to do hangouts every night, obviously. But I am trying for like three or four um, things that I'm kind of, <laughs> I have nothing in them planned out. But um, yeah, don't give them a voice. If you give them a voice, that gives them power. So. Thing, we're talking about trolls right now, right? Flat earthers. Are, I mean, not all of them are trolls. Some of them actually believe this. And I think this goes to um, to some of the other types of things of dealing with people that you don't want to let them fester. You don't want a uh, flat earth to get out of control. And so you need something every so often to talk about it. And I got some upcoming events that we'll discuss here in a minute. But I think ignoring them is completely is not the answer. I think that they are growing because people are ignoring them. And now that people are showing why their arguments are wrong, they're starting to get uh, bitch slapped back down. So, okay. See, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I don't get a whole lot of flat earth trolls. I don't get so many anti-vaxxers. I don't get a lot of well, those as much there. because I'm very matter of fact about yeah. things. But they are out there. You mean creationism mm -hmm. it still exists. It's still a thing. Um, but okay. So let's go to the next one. Um, use moderators and online tools. Right. And that's, um, that's yeah. why we have chat moderators and shit like that. So yeah, mute is a wonderful thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely, mute's a wonderful thing. I'm gonna do it right now to you. Um, no, so that's that's an easy one. Uh, here we go. This is a big one too. This one's from Michael, uh, who actually has a community. Uh, create a unified community. Um, if you have a loyal mm -hmm. online community, you may not have to worry much about trolls since the members will, will monitor themselves. And this is the thing that I I really have been trying to do with the, like the great debate community, my community, um, let the people monitor their own kind of stuff. Um, if there's a created, if there's a united front uh, about the goals and the things for the community, then when mm -hmm. a troll comes in, yeah, they're already done. We've had, we've had trolls you know, infiltrate before. Um, they don't last very long. Um, they're gone. Right. And then they go find some other group to do all the See, time. I, I tend you know, it's like on my Twitter account, Somebody will troll me. I, I don't respond directly to any mentions. I always quote tweet any mentions. That's just my policy. So if somebody says something to me, I can quote it and I put a response. So if somebody says something absolutely ridiculous, I'll quote it and I'll put a response at the top and I'm like, that's not how the female body works, comma friend. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah, you know? Work. and then um, and then everybody who follows me will see that, right. and then they have their own comments yeah, associated. No, that's that's with fine. It. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I I find though a lot of people use quote, uh, you know, be quoting. Um, they'll look for the most myopic thing and they'll try to find something in that quote to take uh, nefariously, and I, I it gets, gets tiring because you look at especially. When you're, you're just typing something out and you're just getting thoughts out there, um, sure, there might be a lack of clarity, something like that. But look, not everybody has nefarious motives. And you don't have to look at everything they say pedantically to say, oh, this is your real intent. 
right? Just take a little That's bit. That's true. Clarity. That's so. true. That's why I tend to not be snarky or rude on my Twitter account. I've um, seen you be snarky or rude in other situations. Yes, yeah, only yeah. only when it's like it, it's yeah, appropriately so. Appropriately so, but it I, you know <laughs> slap people down. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, next one uh, is a listen. Uh, listen, if an online troll is really a customer complaining, know the difference and listen. Um, I, I think it's, it's good advice. Obviously, you know there are people that have have general concerns, and there's people that just have uh, illegitimate concerns, and it's up to the people to determine which are which. Um, that's all there is to it. And if, if somebody has a legitimate concern, you just don't think it is a legitimate concern. If that person takes it personal, it's their business. I I, is, I can't do anything about that. You know, so it, it, you should listen to that's people true. because people do have valid things, and um, it doesn't make somebody a troll if they have a criticism, not by any means. And I hope that's my true. live chatters. You know they know the difference right if somebody comes in and says you know brown blue ballers uh suck ass flat earth rules you know they're, they're god they don't even need to ask me they don't they have full empowerment just get rid of them we know that's a troll right so right i mean and also somebody who has legitimate concerns is going to engage with you on an intellectual level or at least some level to where you can engage and have a proper discussion it's not going to be flaming or rude or circular. It's going to be or vicious. I'm upset about this, you know, or it's not going to be inherently hurtful. Yes. Right. They're right. going to express their feelings. And so I've had people that have come to me who've disagreed what I've said and I've listened to them and, you know, we've engaged in very fruitful discussions. That's, that's far different than somebody who's just being a jerk. So. Right exactly. Yeah. All right, two more to go, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, number nine, fight back with facts. And I think that you are especially um, <laughs> the one that you know is good at this. You know, you you because as a scientist, you document all the data. Um, and so when people say, "Hey, look," uh, oh, I love this one. Like for example, the whole goop thing, right? Oh God, yes. Fight back, <laughs> with facts that, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, just, you know, you're just like, this is, these are the facts in the matter. And so it's like, well, well, I think this, okay, but that's not what science says. Right, <laughs> this is, exactly. these are the facts here. Here's a graph. Do you want me to put it in a table? I can do that for you if that's easier. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I, I find that if I'm very matter of fact about things and I'm, and I make it non emotive, and I say, this is just what the evidence is. This is what we have. And you can either accept it or not. That's okay. It is, it's your choice, but I'm, I'm not going to get angry at you. I'm not going to yell at you. You're not going to yell at me. I'm just going to say, this is, this is what it is. <laughs> so you just kind of eliminate the emotional aspect of the argument and it, and then that's when you realize or you find out whether the person is interested in actually learning something or engaging with you on an intellectual level or if they're just angry and want to yell. Right. So. Okay. Last but last least, uh, correct mistakes. And this is even trolls can make good points. And that's that's true. And we'll see that a lot mm -hmm. like um, in some other channels where people will troll the live feed, but the troll will make a good point, uh, especially with science. But of course, we have a lot of science deniers, right? Yes, and, yes, we do. Science deniers <laughs> go, even though the troll, you know, may conclusively have something that's factual, um, and correcting somebody, a lot of people go this. They won't correct it, even though the troll had said something scientifically correct or whatever. People don't like to be scientifically corrected. I guess, right? I mean, we we all make scientific mistakes. I'm not a scientist, so I get things wrong all the time. People are like, hey, Steve, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, let's let's talk about it. Show me why. Okay, you're right. Um, but a lot of people, for some reason, they think that if they make one scientific error, they can never be like thought of as a person who is a science enthusiast or, um, cause I mean, when you, when you say that, it, that you you know, you know more than a PhD in science and you haven't even been to college and people correct your scientific mistakes, when you have that many PhDs saying your science is wrong, the odds are your science is probably wrong. Yes. Probably yes. speaking. Would you not say? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, and, and to be quite honest, um, well, I don't have a PhD. I have two master's degrees, but I don't have a PhD. And I don't know that I necessarily want one. When you do the math, 2M equals P. 
HD. Uh, you know, it's sure. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's well, just. The point is you have an education. You are actually yes. been formally educated. Yes. I, I have been, I have been formally, you know, formally educated. Um, I've had work, people. You've done your, 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 you know, the, uh, you've done the, the, uh, the hard work to get to learn something and sat in those classes. You've done the, the test. Yes. You've demonstrated accomplice and proficiency in these fields. <laughs> exactly. And so, um, I, I mean, I've, I've had people explain multiplication to me and I'm like, really? <laughs> so I was like, oh. <laughs> what? I, yes, I, I won't get into that. I don't, here, I don't even know what that entails. He's just, explain you, know, how works, uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's funny. And, and I have people that get threatened by me to a degree. I don't know everything and I don't profess to know everything. I, and I find that the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know anything. And so, but but see that that's kind of like the dilemma of of the human condition when you realize there's so much to learn and there's no way you can possibly know everything even if you learn a lot of stuff you're like man i'm still dumb oh, even, even, you know, it's like, so even if you just pick one scientific topic you'll never learn anything about the topic you probably exactly. won't but the people who think they know everything tend to not know that much, but they're the loudest. It's DK. It is definitely DK. No, no question about it. They're they're, they're the loudest and they're and they're the most boisterous and they're the ones who have that overconfident bias. I'm actually writing a book now. I've gotten like pretty good response about people wanting me to write a book about cognitive biases and how that messes up our everyday decisions and real world examples of how our cognitive biases can run wild. And it is just, Absolutely. so I've started writing a book about that. <laughs> well, no, I got to tell you, I got to wrap this up. This, this was really, well, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a good, this was a good uh, appendium to your video, a good part two, I think. I, I think, think so. Yeah. You, you, you touched on some of the stuff, but I think this was a good way to spend two hours expanding upon them. So I, I definitely want to thank you for that. Well, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we could talk a bit more about it. You know, internet trolls are interesting beings. Uh, you know what? I have to tell you, I'm not that interested. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just, they, they're always going to be around. They do exist. Um, this this is just a video on how we think maybe you should take, you know, some of these advice to, to deal with them. Do what you, you will. But let me make some announcements before we go off air. Let me thank Irvine and Michael for joining us. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, this, these are the uh, things coming up here. Uh, we have a debate on Sunday with Emperor Atheist and Max hangs out on the if morality in the Bible is compatible with omnibenevolence. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. Um, we also have Richard Carrier back on the 28th. Uh, here's here's the biggest one. We've got two big, big things coming up, you guys. Um, on Thursday, we have a flat earth debate with Geranism. And Geranism, as many people know, is like one of the biggest flat earthers on YouTube. He has like 91,000 subs. Him and somebody else, they approached me on having a debate on uh, surveying, geodesic surveying, and things of that nature. We have a very structured format that we'll be doing. It'll be on this particular channel here, my main channel. It'll be just the three of us. No other people will be coming in. Uh, it'll be streaming live. <laughs> and uh, Like I said, if you guys know Geranism, it's, it's a huge, huge channel that he has. And he's... He's willing to come into this platform because he's seen how I did the last one. Um, people have told him he'll get a fair shot that this platform uh, on my channel is a fairly moderated uh, discussional group. So that's great. On Sunday, we also have a huge event. We have a guy named Nathan Thompson, I think is his last name. We're going to be streaming, dual streaming because a Restreamer. Uh, I think thanks to Mel because she kind of reminded me of Restreamer. But I think my partner knows yes. that. But we're going to be we're going to be streaming to a Facebook group that has about 80 plus thousand members. Um, and he's going to be engaging with Red's rhetoric. Uh, we had we had to make some plans. We wanted Red's. I didn't think he could make it. I went with another person soundly, but uh, <clears throat> Red said he can. So soundly, we're going to postpone to another time. But so on Sunday, one o'clock Pacific time, Red's rhetoric will be debating, I think, the biggest flat earther on on a youtube but one of the biggest flat earthers as far as having a group so that's going to be not on this channel though that's going to be dual streamed to the non sequitur show channel and to facebook uh, in, in their group so this could get literally hundreds of thousands of views the last time something went to facebook it got like two million views and that was um 
I think it was Godless Girl's video, because that got like a couple hundred thousand uh, views on her feeding lobster to her dog. So this is be quite quite huge. If you haven't subscribed to the, the Non Sequitur Show channel yet, the video will be in the uh, the link will be in the video description after this is uploaded. Uh, I put all the links in afterwards if I can due to the monetization issues. But go sub sub to that. Also, the podcast you can go download these podcasts off iTunes. The last one we did was with Seth Andrews from the Thinking Atheist. It was awesome. We just did one last night with with the R and Raw, which will be po posted soon. And we have some really other big names coming up as well. So I appreciate this, guys. Thanks for watching this. Go sub to the the Mel. Her her link is in the video description right now. I want to see her numbers go up if we can. She's highly highly underrated and undersubbed. I I don't get it. <laughs> um, so we got to get to her, her to at least a thousand. Uh, we got to get them to a thousand. And I want to appreciate all the people that have supported this channel and the great debate community and all the uh, channels involved with it. Um, if you'd like to be a patron, it does help. I do appreciate it immensely. Um, the link for that will be in this video description as well, or you can find it on any of my other videos. We, we do we do appreciate a lot. We we do want to give a good product. We do want people to like these these types of hangouts and these types of debates that we're arranging and be a part of the discussion. And obviously, go be. Go check out Mel's videos and be a Patreon to her as well. Um, you know, I've, she, she, I think her Patreon helped pay for um, uh, your web thing, didn't it? Some, something like that. Yes, so it does, it, yeah, so it does work. It paid for my website. It yeah. paid for my website. It helps awesome. me keep the lights on. And I also contribute um, to scientific research. So I do donate my Patreon pledges um, from time to time to various different scientific endeavors. So huh? it, it, it does help everybody. So we, we do appreciate We do note these things. I have a list of everybody who's even donated a dollar. I got a running list and it's on the uh, Patreon um, and donations page on the uh, www.greatdebatecommunity.com. So it is something that we do take note of. It's nothing like, oh, this person gave a dollar. So what? No, if you gave a dollar, you get recognized. And I think that's appreciate. All right, Absolutely. So, so whatever this guy's, thank you very much. It was a great hangout. Please like this video, dislike it, uh, leave a comment. Comments are great. I, I love reading comments. I get, uh, I have 600 videos now, so I, I probably get about 50 to 100 comments a day that I go through. Um, they, they, you get a lot of comments now. Do you go through all your comments out of curiosity? I, I do, I do go through my comments, and sometimes I just let them pass. But how many <laughs> do you think you get? Yeah, it, it's impossible I to respond to all of them anymore. I can't. I used to try, but it's just I can't. It's just I I don't get as many comments as you. Most of the, you know my my more recent comments have been, "Why aren't you attacking creationists?" I'm like, "That's not what I do." Yeah, leave that to, me. Leave that to them. Yeah, leave that to the leave that to the men. <laughs> I'm gonna take off my shoe and beat you with it. See? Uh, aren't you too busy making a sandwich to do that? Are you fixed oh, yet? No, I'm melting. I'm melting. Are you fixed I, yet? <laughs> oh my God, do I want one of those? Um, yes, I love the sonic screwdriver. Yeah. I love the fact they got Whitaker. I, I love the fact that Doctor Who is going to be a female. <laughs> and all you people that are bitching that Doctor Who is a chick, go fuck off. I, I'm just, that's the <laughs> dumbest freaking argument of all time. I think it's great. I think she's going to be amazing. And Mel, if you agree with me on that, I'm going to end the hangout and say goodnight.